The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Standard Heating is having their 94-year celebration. They have special offers just for you this February. Whether you need a new furnace or a tune-up, they have something special for everyone. Visit standardheating.com to save today. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 X. Yeah, I love my dogs. I love, like, dogs or, like, lions or something, but I knew I couldn't get no lions because I ain't got the house for it. It seems like there's a fine line between having a pet and having a hostage from a different species. <laughs> you go to somebody's house, they're like, close the door, he'll get out. Close the door, he'll get out. <laughs> Owner walks away, the dog's like, <laughs> he's not looking. <laughs> Open the door, let me out, come on. <laughs> Is this your dog? Yes. Isn't he the cutest little cutie wooty? Yes, he's very cute. Yes, he's cute. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> okay. Look at it. Look at that face. Come on. Look at that face. You look at him. Look at that <laughs> face. The average dog will stand between 15 and 16 inches at the withers. Bitches should be slightly smaller. Happy National Love Your Pet Day. Let's get the show started. Showtime. National Love Your Pet Day, huh? It is. That's the cutest thing I've heard in a long time. There was I'll, a, I'll tell you who let the damn dogs out. Who that? Your mother. What? <laughs> your mom jokes this early? Come on. I love it. What your, a great way to start the your day. Your mother let the dogs out so she could make more room in the house for strange men. <laughs> That's who let the friggin' dogs out. I already had a text earlier about a, a your mom joke. I, I enjoy the your mom joke bit. I don't think they'll ever get old. No, they're so funny. My mom has been a target of your mom jokes for the last decade. <laughs> I don't yeah. think there's any mom that's ever been targeted more than my own. No, it's been unfair. For National Love Your Pet Day, a recent study showed the most affectionate dogs, according to canine experts. And I'm wondering if any of you have... Or had one of these Letter in the past. Buck. Here's your top seven. Letter friggin' buck. Affectionate dogs. The most affectionate dogs, according to canine experts. Pugs. Anyone here have a pug? No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nah, my neighbor did, and let me tell you, he was one friendly bitch. My brother's got one, and adorable. Absolutely adorable. What about a boxer? No. Nope. We had a boxer mix growing up, and one of the greatest dogs we've ever had. Golden Retriever, that's a popular oh, one. Oh, that is. Good family dog. Uh, never had one myself, but my brothers had a couple, and let me tell you right now, they were special. What about a Newfoundland? Nope. No. no. Aren't those no. That, like really big? Very strong. Mm-hmm. They're large. <laughs> they have great swimming abilities. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pitbull. Uh, uh, nope. I had a half lab, half pit growing up, and he was, he was the best dog ever. Now, I bet... Everyone's had one of these, a lab. Yep, yeah. I have one right now. Very popular. Of course. Six feet under. Rest in peace. <laughs> oh, that's how deep you bury a lab, six feet under the yep. ground. Yep. Okay. Uh, and number one, the most affectionate dog. Let me co- try to guess. Okay, according to canine experts. Affectionate. Well, you know, so far you haven't uh, you haven't named any of those little pocket dogs, you know. Um, well, so, pug. Oh, pretty tiny. I suppose they are small. Um, so I'm thinking you're going to go smaller. Uh, maybe not. I'll go with Cocker Spaniel. I had That's a Cocker a, Spaniel growing up. Very friendly. Very affectionate. Very yes. affectionate. I decided mm-hmm. I was going to say like Chihuahua or the stinking mm. uh, Dachshund, but I'm going to go Cocker's Spaniel. Anybody else? I guess you said the two that would be my yeah. guess, a Golden Retriever or a Lab. I don't think a Chihuahua. I'd go Dachshund. Dachshund. Ooh, Dachshund's a good guess. I used to call those Deshaun's I growing up. I said that already. I said Dachshund. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm going with, though. Ah, uh, Rottweiler. Why not? Well, that's Get a crazy. good one. I've heard they're affectionate. Uh, we, Dump we it had, on a, us. We had a Rottweiler mix. Nick, you said small dog? Yeah. Great Dane. Whoa! Oh, we got uh, two no of them way. at home, and they are very affectionate. They like to sit on your lap. They like to lean up against you. They like to cuddle. They like to lay on top of you and basically smother you. Because they're heavier than you, I feel like, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I have one that weighs about the same and then one that's got 40 pounds on me. That's insane. Yeah. Oh, your they're, wife is going to be geeked about that. They're big lovers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She you know, is a Great Dane freak. I was telling you about that pug I had as a neighbor years ago. He was cute. And I don't mean this to sound mean or insensitive, but you know what the cutest thing about that pug was? How he constantly struggled to breathe. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. That's why I've never had one of those. Uh, it's um, them and bulldogs, right? They always have those problems with their 
their nose. The French yeah. bulldogs, especially. I yeah, I don't think I could have one of those because I would constantly just feel bad. <laughs> yeah, was, anytime I'm around my brothers, I always want to have an oxygen mask <laughs> just ready for her in case because yeah. she always does sound like she's struggling to breathe. Yeah, like, come on, just Especially cough it when up. she gets all excited. Do I need to give oh, this dog CPR? Yeah. <laughs> Where they like do that reverse sneezing thing when they get excited. Yeah. Our Chihuahua does that. That's Jesus. a pretty good list yep. there, Cubby. Yeah, those are some pretty cute dogs. That's a pretty good list oh, here oh, on uh, National, uh, how do you call it, Love Your Pet Day? It, it, it's not dogs, it's pets it's or dogs? pets in general. Okay, pets in general. Holly asked Jesus to throw Bernice Mountain Dogs. I have a friend who has a Bernice Mountain Dog. That is the most friendly, cuddly dog of, I've ever met. Just a huge loaf of a dog and just loves attention, loves just snuggling up on you. Yeah, I partied with... Uh, one or two of those. What dog and, uh, isn't affectionate? They're all they're all quite affectionate, at least in my experience. Yeah, good good yeah. question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they've got good owners that take good care of them and treat them well, yeah, they're usually all pretty pretty friendly. Mm-hmm. They're good dogs. What the hell else is going on around here? Tuesday morning, nearly forty degrees already. Going to be a hell of a day. A Goodbye hell of a day. No, huh? Goodbye snow. Oh, hello mud in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. Can't More wait for dog that. Poop. Yep. <laughs> Speaking Our of dogs, backyard is pretty good at flooding. I'd imagine we'll get some standing water out there. <laughs> so fun. Floating turds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I spent some time last night playing pocket billiards. Uh, something I wish I had more time to do. Ashley, are you still shooting pool now and again? Yes, sir. Are you getting any better at it, or are you still all talk? I think I'm. I think I've gotten a lot better this year. Yeah. Okay. I was a little disappointed in your showing at Nick's pool party, uh, specifically, you know, billiards. Yeah, I think I think some of the nerves got to me too. Because you I, did I really talk wanted of, to do good. You talked a very big game about how well you and your boyfriend play. And, then and what, you weren't bad. You could destroy me, but I, I thought that you guys would dominate based on. The fact that you said you would dominate. They I made a lot prepared. of noise. I was not prepared for Nick. I, I think you kind of downplayed how good you were. You you're, guys you're just, really good. He's got I'm his own not, table. I'm not that <laughs> well, good. Well, I mean, so do I. <laughs> I only play like once a month. No, it was just, it, no one was really great or really terrible. You just made a lot of friggin' noise. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't live up to it. Uh, so I try to play every Saturday night with uh, some derelicts at, at my neighborhood a beer hall. Sometimes things things get in the way. Yeah. Not able to do it as often as I'd like, but when I do get to play, I, I do love it. Love to play the game. Heard a good story this past Saturday playing billiards uh, with my pals. Um, one of my one of my buddies. Let's just call him, we'll we'll call him Donnie. Donnie has his own table, and he had a he had a story for. A, for us from a number of years ago. He had a party, big beer party, and uh, one of his pals had sex on Donnie's pool table. Sex on the pool table, everyone? Mm, yeah. yeah. He, oh, yeah. Never. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> How awesome was it? Really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was a good sex? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best. It's not... It's the best piece of sex I ever had. It's not comfortable, not even by a long shot. But I'd be if, nervous just getting up there in the first place. Meaning, usually the, the in my experience, the the dude usually doesn't get up there. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> usually I, the woman's the, the only one on the pool table. Josh yeah. is oh, there. oh <laughs> dang! Yeah, yeah, no wonder it was a little different for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never had sex on a uh, pool table or a oh, I've crawled, bubble hockey table. I, I've crawled all the way up on top of the damn thing. Really? Yeah, when I was younger. Not these days, but when I was younger, absolutely. Ashley, you're always good for punching me in the gut with something. <laughs> Some comment. Okay, I, so you're saying the girl is up there, not just like she's half of her's up there, and they're both facing the same direction. I, so I think I see what you're saying. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. There's all different ways to... To fold on a pool table, I've, you know, I'm standing on my feet, she's on the table, I'm half on the table, I've, I've been all the way up on the table. There's all kinds of routes you can take. So anyway, Donnie has this party, and at one point or another, I think after most folks had checked out or passed out, 
one of his buddies decides to mount a gal on his pool table. And Donnie wakes up in the morning, and his pal has left a massive stain. Oh, oh ick. no. That's not right. On that friggin' felt. Oh. It's beautiful, isn't it? When you have a nice felt. I mean, just, it, you know. I bet that's not cheap to replace. No, it's too. not. It's not. A couple hundred bucks? And, oh, that's uh, less than I would have thought, even. I can't. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the story, and that maybe will give us an idea. Like, it may probably depends on the table and the quality of the. Yeah. So, a massive stain was left there on the table, and Donnie's pissed off. He says to himself, you know, because everyone had upped and gone. Part, you know, the next morning he finds the the stain. He, uh, he's thinking, I got a perfectly good floor. I got a perfectly good couch. Yeah. Perfectly good bathroom. You could have done it anywhere's. But his buddy wants to, you know, do the deed on his pool table and leaves this terrible stay. So I thought this was brilliant and a great act of revenge and a great message sent. Donnie could have gone nuts, you know, called the guy, F-bombed him, showed up at his house, hollered at him. Instead, oh, uh, on a side note, Donnie also worked with this guy. They worked together. So Donnie takes a, I don't know, a, 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 what's that? What do you call these things? Uh, nut jobs bring them to the airport and threaten people with them. And you cut like box, this. Box cutter? Box cutter. He takes a box cutter, I think it was, and he cuts out the stain. Cuts the felt off of the table, frames it, <laughs> yes, and brings it to work, and hands it to his buddy, who couldn't keep it in his pants or find a couch or a floor to have sex. Hands it to his buddy, the framed picture of this stained felt, <laughs> and says, "You owe me four hundred dollars for a new, whatever you call it." That's badass. <laughs> I w- I'd That's go absolutely funny. nuts. There's- I'm, I'm the only one that's allowed to have sex on my pool table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some friend you are. Yeah, you're, you're a stickler. <laughs> oh, I would go crazy. I Yo. wouldn't be happy with that either. I'll be honest with you. When when we had that get-together at my house, which seems like a thousand years ago now, when we were all shooting pool, I don't know if you could tell, but I was wound tight the whole time. Yeah, I, I know did, exactly I what didn't you mean. like you amateurs coming anywhere near my freaking <laughs> pool table. Oh, I, and you told me about your cat jumped up there and you almost had a conniption fit he there. Only, he only did it once, and that was all it took. I went crazy. Learned his lesson? That would be, I mean, yeah. that's a, like a cat's dream, is that type of felt to tear up. See, that love was, that. That was the old cat. The current cat can't jump that high, and he's terrified of the pool table. Good. The noises make him very nervous as soon as I start knocking billiard balls around he runs downstairs and hides so that's that's the good news now the noise is coming from ashley's pool table makes me very nervous and uncomfortable <laughs> yeah you sicko so yeah. that that's that's the troubling part of having this you know almost brand new pool table is i can't help it i i'm i'm so protective of it that when i have people over to play which as i said earlier isn't very often I spend the whole time nervous. You sons of bitches better not ruin this damn pool table. Mm-hmm. Don't bring your beer anywhere near it. Don't bring your slice of pizza yep. anywhere. I'm the same way with my Donkey Kong machine. I have a full-size, upright, arcade cabinet Donkey Kong machine, and I've had friends over. They bring their kids, and the kids are just mashing away, pounding the buttons, and I'm like, you, you need to get them to stop right now or I'm going to have a panic attack. God <laughs> knows what, uh, you know, what garbage the kids have on their hands. Exactly. Oh, yeah. it, it's been up their nose for mm-hmm. All right, how about everyone sex on a Donkey Kong machine? Anybody? <laughs> no, no. No, no comment. Nick, Shit. I've even been protective over um, the bar that I shoot pool out of. They're, they have three really nice tables and there's been times where, you know, some younger kids come in, 21 year olds and They'll put their beer on the tables. Yeah. And if those tables get wrecked, I mean, it affects us. Nobody and can play. So there's been times so there's where I'm like, hey, the- could you, um, could you maybe, like, I don't want to be that person. I'm not a bitch, I promise, but can you get your stuff off the pool table? It's weird that they would ever think that you could put something like that on a pool. It's mm-hmm. so disrespectful. I do love when I go to those bars and they got the signs up that say, like, don't put your butt up here and nobody, you know, younger than the age of 16 can play without a parent. Like, yeah, they're doing something right here. No, Cubby, you're right. But when we were young guys, we'd put our be- our beers right on the side of the pool table. It was stupid. Just because we're just dumb and young and you don't think to. Maybe, you're, like my folks, if you put a glass on any piece of furniture or something, would be all over your ass. So maybe that's why for really? me. Really? Okay. 
Chipman Jesus lost his virginity on a pool table. Oh, nice. So That's did cool Repel story. Master Jesus. Uh, this person says, my daughter was conceived on a pool table. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a... I never a, thought of it. It's kind of a sexual stepping stone or a sexual landmark to do it on. Uh, what's the word? What's the proper word? You want to notch that one off your uh, list. Yeah, I think I'm past that. Too old. Yeah, you're too old for it. Now, I wouldn't dare crawl up there now, but when I was younger, I've had a pool table on and off for 25 some odd years. So yeah, when I was young, I'd crawl up there. And I don't know if I have the height to do what you were describing, Ashley. Either way, <laughs> I, I don't think I could do something like that. Maybe uh, I need a sex stepping stool. Oh, geez, Jesus. I don't think he understands the context of the conversation we're having right now. He said, I've had sex with a pool table. Which corner is y'all's favorite? God dang. <laughs> So, yeah, my buddy, my Saturday night billiard pal Donnie, he had uh, a tragedy at his house with his pool table. You don't do that to a bro. A a, a real man accounts for and is respectful with his money shots. Right, Cubby? I totally, I mean, sometimes they get away from you. Sometimes they surprise you, but yeah. And sure, and if that happens, you take care of it. You don't just pass out and it's Donnie's problem the next morning that I've battered the felt on your pool table. I appreciate folks texting in. I mentioned I wouldn't have the height to take care of uh, my significant other on a pool table. She's up there and I'm not. Somebody else reminds me I also wouldn't have the length. (laughs) (laughs) They don't know what you're hauling around. They don't know. Touche. This uh, this person, I agree with this. I can barely do sex on the bed, much less a t- pool table. Yeah, it's a young person's game. And, you know, enter at your own risk. And I'm not trying to be cute with the word enter. You know what I mean. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's any piece of furniture outside of your normal fare that I've ever uh, had a sex on. And I can't think of anything. All right. not, never a t- like a regular table, countertop? Nope. Nothing. Uh, motorcycle seat. No. That was a good guess, though, wasn't it? Because yeah. you used to ride one of those motorbikes. I sure did. Yeah, nope, never that. Boy, hmm. we had a, many years ago, me and a gal, we murdered a kitchen table. <laughs> it was kindling. <laughs> is it just to be, uh, I'm, I'm using the wrong word, but unconventional? Is that part of the allure? Like, we've done it on the bed, we've done it on the couch, we've done it on the back seat of my car, let's mix it up for well, some definitely. fun. Definitely. That, that's not my case. It, at least for me personally, the, the kitchen table that we we killed, that was just a you walk in the house and you're just pop home, close off, and we're ready to do it wherever. Mm-hmm. See, I'd pick the that's, floor and that. I would. I don't think the kitchen table would ever come to mind. Or maybe sitting on a chair. You know, you're sitting on a chair and then she's sitting on mm, you spider yeah. style. For me, it was always that let's do it now type approach it wasn't about a uh, you know a conscious effort to you know to mark our territory in every part of the house it was just uh, we're tearing each other limb from limb as soon as we enter the uh, the garbage townhouse that i used to live in but yeah we got up on this 1937 kitchen table that was worth about four dollars you know what i mean it was yeah i was a young guy so all my furniture was trash right it mm-hmm. didn't it, as long as it held together while i swept craft mac and cheese <laughs> into my mouth that was I, i'll call it a kitchen table and i, I fired her on top of that dim, uh, damn thing and after a short period of time just boom boom we were both down <laughs> i don't know how we didn't get cut to pieces because the whole thing just turned into garbage that's so our, scary our kitchen table's not even big enough to do something like that on it's super tiny and then it's mm-hmm. so it's got these uh things that flip up on the side you know to make oh, it yeah. round yep. and it's really tiny. i mean honestly it, it sits like two people and i could imagine those things just falling under the weight of, you, <laughs> of half Definitely. your body on that thing the older i get the more like uh if something like the heat like the heat of the moment where you're like oh like oh well there's a couch right here there's a table right here i'll actually like stop and be like what are we doing let's just we have a bed upstairs, much more comfortable. We can figure it out up there. Let's just go up there. Sure. Uh, this person says they prefer to leave the disappointment for the bedroom. They make it exclusively in there. <laughs> you don't want to disappoint someone in every room of the house. Sure, I Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So you can't think of one unconventional spot, huh? You know, maybe there's been one, but there's nothing that 
stands out. I was trying to think. You mentioned the counter. Man, I, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, that was flo- the one. Well, oh, two. I have two. A dock, and then the countertops. I mean, I've been in in places like a porta potty once, and I'm not happy about that. <laughs> uh, I at, am uh, an edge fest or an X fest. Uh, a, a janitor's closet You've at done an some establishment. Things. You've done some things. Yeah, a but janitor's never, closet? Whoa. Yeah. But if you were with sp- the janitor. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> you I checked think, my I plumbing. Lucky man. You were specifically talking about in the home. Yeah, or, or yeah, some, like some unconventional. Because you know, like you said, Ashley, you got a bed, you got a floor if you're in a, you know. The like, garage. In a car. On in the, the garage. Way. What about a uh, gal <laughs> sitting on a washing machine? <laughs> no. <laughs> the rooftop. Like an actual roof of a home? Roof of a home. No. Nope. Oh, that'd be cool. I'm putting that on my bucket list. <laughs> it might be the last thing you do, so yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, make oh. sure it's flat. <laughs> in the in the discipline room. <laughs> you know what? We couldn't where afford build- the house with the discipline. Where you're building your discipline volcano. Yeah. <laughs> and my punishment piranha tank. Mm. <laughs> I'm really surprised you haven't done it on the couch or anything like that. Oh, I have. I, I, I was oh, saying okay. unconventional. Unconventional okay. you know, is like the your, word, Wobble. Like, pool yeah. ta- like the pool table would never even enter my mind. I would never even think of something like that. I'm Here's not creative when it comes to Listener it. texted in to say the snowmobile seat. Oh, that's a good one. Mm. Yeah, I did it on a snowmobile seat. That's where my brother and I would sleep, not together, separately. Uh, back when we were young kids... If we got home too late at night to where we knew if we walked in the house, we'd be in big trouble. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Remember back in high school when you thought, ah, Christ, I'm in so much trouble, I might as well not even enter the house. (laughs) I'd rather deal with it in the morning than deal with it now at 3.30 when I'm terribly drunk. I know I'm in trouble. I'll just stay. We would go and I did it. My brother did it on separate occasions. Instead of going into the house and facing our mother's wrath, we would just go into the garage and sleep on the snowmobile. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I get friction on a pickle jar, Jesus, that on a swing in a park. Mm. Oh, that would be hard. Been at a park for uh, some uh, lovemaking, but never on a swing. Um, Deer stand. Some of our listeners have done it in the deer stand. Nice. Fireplace Jesus said the best sex he ever had was on top of the bathroom counter. Elementary music teacher Jesus said uh, front porch as long as you have a sturdy railing. <laughs> An ice say, house. Fish house, sure. Yep. I would say since we started this conversation talking about doing it on a pool table, a billiard table, I'd say that is one of the most uncomfortable places I've ever done it. It oh, really? really? Is, I would yeah. think that'd be more comfortable than the um, kitchen table simply because of like the felt. Maybe it doesn't do it. I know oh, it's thin. Oh, no, no, oh, no. Burn. It's, I think it's worse than uh, like the kind of burn you get on a carpet. Have you ever done it on a bumper pool table? Now that'd be oh. something. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be impressive. It's not comfortable. I mean, that that granite, what do they call that stuff? Slate. Yep. Whatever that is. Oh, it hurts. You, you feel it the next day like a some bitch. The only thing worse than that, I think, was once on a cold laundry room floor. Oh, that was oh, it was cold. <laughs> oh God, should have kept my mouth shut. Jesus, number six tee box at a golf course. Oh, golf courses, yeah. That's a few people actually are texting in saying golf course outside. Oh, man, uh, lucky outside. Uh, <laughs> late at night kind of a thing. Retired Air oh, Force Jesus did night. it on a patio table in the middle of the day, and he's still not allowed back at Costco. <laughs> 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 I'm an executive member. I'd be allowed to do that with my membership <laughs> amongst the elite. Wisconsin uh, blind guy Jesus is trampoline in the backyard. Josh, you have a trampoline back there. Any, uh, anything ever go down? Uh, yeah, that'd be real good considering I've got... Uh, Three neighbors basically in my backyard, so I'll give that a shot. <laughs> well, I mean, not even with in, kids in the dead of night when it's just pitch black. No, I I don't think I'd want to. Oh, plus there's bugs back there. Ah. Oh no, no bugs. Oh. Well, I'm uh, starting. You know what? I I got a chill just thinking about that friggin' laundry room floor from all those years ago. <laughs> was that at your uh, your folks' place? No, it was at actually at uh, the house of a quite famous person. Really now? That's right. With the famous person? Or no, was it, no, is... no, 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 no. And let me tell you, the rich and famous laundry room floor is just as cold as yours. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I was thinking. I grew up in a Minneapolis basement. That wouldn't be a good place to have sex on the floor. No. <laughs> 
just wet concrete. Always wet. Why is it always wet? <laughs> ah. And then just bugs that haven't been discovered yet. Bugs moving around. Weight benches. Ah, uh, yep. Weight benches. Stay Believe it or not, you can't, you can't tell by looking Shut at me, on. but I have had weight <laughs> benches in my home in the in the past, and I thought that was quite uncomfortable as well, the weight bench. I would think so. They're not super wide. No, no, and not quite as cushioned as they appear to be from a distance. One night, I was doing it on the weight bench and uh, looked over, and uh, there was a uh, another couple watching us. No <laughs> way. Oh, so you were like at a public gym? No, no, no. It was in my home. Oh, there was, oh, like a party or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Whoa. Yeah. They were just sitting there watching mm. us. Mm. I think I'd be into that. <laughs> well, yeah. I... Again, you just punched me in the stomach sometimes. <laughs> did I Did I sound like uh, I disapproved? No, 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 no. No, I was I fine with that. Go ahead. No. Let me show you this. Ashley. <laughs> and let me show you this one right over here. Now we're going to move over to the pool table. Come this way a little ways. <laughs> Yeah, it was all dark down there, end of the night. We thought we were the only two people, and I looked to my right, and this, there was a couple that said, uh, go ahead. More anxiety than hair Jesus said. He's a parking lot guy. Walmart, Menards, doesn't matter. Pick a parking lot. He's interested in that. There's a lot. He'll bang in it. <laughs> That's something right there. Ooh, smoke wrench Jesus on a Ferris wheel. Had to go around twice. <laughs> Had to figure out the timing. <laughs> yeah, you really do. Oh, I don't, that, that would be my biggest nightmare. I hate Ferris wheels. I love if, Ferris wheels. If you know it's going to go around twice, would I'd feel pressure to, you know, obviously you'd want to pause when you get towards the bottom. Sure. There, but I'd feel pressure to give it two rounds, right? <laughs> I mean, if you finish before the first time you get down, you might leave someone disappointed. Right. Yeah. Again, that sounds like a young person's game. I'm with you on that. One. I... I need a little more time than that. Victory Motorcycle Jesus said, All this thinking about different times and places, I was more of a whore than I even recalled. Mm. I think we should be proud of ourselves. Bravo, he said. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, dude. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. <laughs> so there you go. What else is going on? What did I say? It's Tuesday today. It's National Love Your Pet Day. You wouldn't know it by the vile conversation that we're having. <laughs> but it's it National. It started out so innocent. <laughs> yeah, it really did. And then Ashley's talking about being an exhibitionist. <laughs> What'd she say? That she want, she would be into people watching her having a, well, yeah. having a sex or two. There's a, there's a couple of us in the room who don't have a problem. Yeah, with. I'd give it a try. What the hell? Oh, you haven't tried it yet? No. What? I haven't had the opportunity to. Well, have you tried it on purpose more than the one time, the orgy? I mean, I guess maybe you just happened to uh, the, orgy. <laughs> the incident, uh, you know, because that I, well, maybe that's not really on purpose, but you knew what was going to happen. You're, ref- if- you're referring to that tropical trip where me and a gal walked out onto a beach and there were 70 other couples having sex. You might remember your erection landed on another guy's erection when you lost your footing. Yes, it did. It happens. <laughs> Head on collision, son. It was. So your question is, have I tried it on purpose? Yeah, you mentioned the weight thing, the weight bench. You didn't know somebody was watching. You just happened to look over, and oh my gosh, there's a couple watching us. Right. Uh, so to answer your question, yes, I have done it on done that on purpose. Outside of the orgy? Yes. Oh, okay. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. I Where, thought I had heard everything. Feel free to watch. Feel free to point a camera this way, whatever you a like. camera <laughs> even. You got to be careful with that kind wait, of thing. Wait, trust me. Uh, it was a long time ago, I'd imagine. Long time ago, and... Uh, we took care of that. <laughs> so this couple on the, uh, that, that's all you on the bench. Yes. You, you're surprised. You didn't know they were there. You you look over. Now, for me, I think I'd immediately get dressed and be apologetic and very embarrassed. Uh-huh. How did you respond? I picked up the pace. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up the pace and put on a little bit of a show. Definitely. Uh, you have to at that point. Put on a little bit of a show. I said, this is what I've been waiting for my whole life. Go ahead. Although, you know, if I was ever going to be on camera, it would have been, what day was that? Sunday. Remember I texted you? I was having a good penis day on Sunday. I did receive a text from you on Sunday where you told me about how you were having a, a, a good penis day. I did. I uh, was urinating, and there's in a, or what they call a powder room, so it's very tiny, and there's a mirror over the sink, and you can see your genitalia oh. as you go. And I happened to glance over, and I thought, is that mine? That doesn't look like mine. <laughs> like that one, I don't know that I'd be embarrassed in a, a gym setting. 
kind of looking around. Is somebody else in here with yeah, me? So I don't know. I just, for whatever reason, I had a, a very good penis day on Sunday, and it set the tone for the week. It really has. Good it's been a good you. week because of that. And some of might be saying, what the hell is he doing texting his bro about his strong penis day? <laughs> we have a special decades-long relationship. We can talk about each other's good or bad penis days. Yeah, anytime. Don't, don't hate just because you don't have that friend in your life. Uh, you know what? I, I wish that you did. If you don't have it, I wish you did have a friend you could share something like that with. Because you were happy for me, and I really appreciate I that. I was. I did try to scare Cubby, though. So he says, hey, you know, it's me. I just took a look at my Johnson in the mirror, and I'm, I'm having a good penis day. And, uh... I texted back to Josh. I said, dude, look again. That's not your penis. <laughs> Run for your life! And it made me nervous because that was my first thought. Like, hey, whose penis is this? <laughs> Steelers fan Jesus wants to know how he gets on this text chain for my penis update. See, I'll, I'll get you on there. I got your number right here. Run. It doesn't happen very often. That's why I had to share it. All right, we better get going for reels around here. Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us. Oh, uh, the stupid news, uh, I think, is uh, what we got coming right around the corner. So uh, come back here in a few minutes on the Half Ass Morning Show. Half Ass Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our experienced and certified technicians at Standard Heating have been trusted to keep our fellow Minnesotans comfortable and confident for over 90 years. We're ready to do the same for you, providing comfort you deserve since 1930. Standard Heating is having their 94-year celebration. They have special offers just for you this February. Whether you need a new furnace or a tune-up, they have something special for everyone. Visit standardheating.com to save today. On the Bigger Pockets Real Estate Podcast, co host David Green and Rob Abasolo interview real estate investors and entrepreneurs about successes, failures, and hard earned lessons. Joined by author Dave Meyer, who wrote a book. I did write a book. It seems like you're coming out with a book every four minutes. You are one to talk. You've released two books this year. I've done half as many as you. It is more about strategy than it is about just finding whatever the new buzzword happens to be. Bigger Pockets Real Estate Podcast on YouTube or wherever you listen. Stupid news on the half assed morning show. Oh, man. I got a lot of text messages here I'd like to share with you before we start pumping away at the stupid news. Ah, we got into the uh, conversation of the, you know, the different places we've had sex. I don't know what you're saying. That conversation came up on morning radio? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening to the world? Ah, we started to, first we were talking about doing it on a pool table. And then that turned into a conversation amongst ourselves and our listening audience at the Different places we've uh, we've had sex. Some of them a little more out of the ordinary uh, than the others. Uh, here's a guy hand glued to your D Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he did it in the cemetery. Oh, oh, I couldn't do that. No, I don't think. I think that might be one of the only places I wouldn't be able to. He said even the dead need a good laugh. <laughs> uh, one of our listeners did it in a chicken coop. Oh, ah. man. I've, I've uh, never smells. been in one, but I'd imagine it doesn't smell very good. Stinky. Where do you find a spot to do it in the chicken coop? You, yeah. must, have been, you must have been doing it standing up. You don't lay down in a chicken coop. No. You don't. Uh, a buddy uh, of mine built one. He saw, uh, he sent me some photos of it. It's huge. It's huge. So you could have sex in that one if you want. I'm giving you permission, by the way. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, one of address. Bad timing. Jesus did it in an empty casket in a funeral home. Oh, oh but that's God. comfy. Uh, front rack of a four-wheeler. These are just some of the highlights. We got so many texts on different places. Our listening audience has gotten it smooth on. Vertically challenged. She's it. Uh, Jesus did it on the back of a snowmobile and said it was cold AF. I'll bet. Oh God, naked pooper. Jesus. Uh, he says he banged the shocks right off his folks' Prius. <laughs> the shocks just cut loose after a while. Uh, who is this bush light bow hunter Jesus? I did it in an elevator in college, just like that crappy Aerosmith song. <laughs> yeah, they all have like those like cameras now. You said you'd be into that. The, the, oh, yeah. But you don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get in trouble. Elevators have cameras, you mean. Yep. Uh, Th- this person says they had sex on the 50-yard line of the high school football team. U.S. Bank Stadium, someone says. What? Uh, 50-yard line. Yeah, that's an old cliche uh, 
high school rite of passage type of a thing, right? Wasn't there someone amongst the five of us who had that story? Yeah, I lost my virginity on the high school football field. Was it at the 69-yard line, knowing you? <laughs> <laughs> it was not. It was partially on the high jump mat and then in the end zone. Only time I ever scored in that end zone. <laughs> <laughs> Mediocre Machinist Jesus did it in a movie theater during a movie. He said it was too sketchy and he won't do that again. I was young and dumb, he said. Yeah, desperate times call for desperate measures. Seeing how we started the conversation about doing it on a pool table. Take this as a word of warning, I guess. Subaru parts Jesus. He says one of his buddies lost a nut having sex on a pool table. He was sitting on the edge. The gal jumped up and her knee crushed his nad. Oh, oh, man. No. Game over. Oh, that's... Gotta be careful. Nad, gone. Up north, Metal Mullet Jesus wants to know, Nick, uh, if you or I ever had sex on the radio station couch. No, I never did. I mean, that was well known as a foul place to sit. Ashley's laid on it for some reason, maybe not knowing the horrible stories about that thing. <laughs> it really is so comfy, though. Well, a lot of people have. I mean, that's the rumor. I've never seen it. A lot have of people... I seen two guys masturbating in this building? Yes, I have. <laughs> have I seen somebody uh, consummate a relationship on that couch? No. No, I never did it on that friggin' couch because... I knew how many people at least claimed they had around the wild days here at 93X, late 90s, early 2000s. Those were lawless days around here. Everybody was drunk and high on coke, and it was just... There's a couple people I believe. They, I don't think they'd make that up. And there's one person who caught someone, and I believe him. No, I, but I, that was part of the reason. I hated the people who claimed to have sex on that couch, so I wanted no part of it. <laughs> I, I did not want to be associated with them, even in that fashion. Propainer Jesus said, on a jet ski in the middle of Lake Superior. Whoa, what a beautiful setting. I just thought of one that I'd never personally got to do, and I won't have the chance to anymore, unfortunately, but I did see two people having sex in the Metrodome behind that big white curtain in the outfield. Sure. And, uh, you know, I look back, and I, I, I hope that they cherish that memory as they should. How that, old were you? I was in college. You were in college. Mm -hmm. well, how old do you think they were? In college. It was during one of those lawless college student ID nights where you could get in for like three bucks on Wednesdays and dollar dogs. And it was just an uh, absolute chaotic scene up there in those, uh, in those outfield bleachers. Don't have a name here, but this one says, in a car wash, in a car. And in case you were wondering, I was able to finish before the cycle ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fun. I'll close this out with a question. Although I think it's there's an easy answer. Um, while we were talking about all this sex stuff, one listener texted in and just simply asked, is it okay to have sex in your friend's bed when he's gone? Uh, absolutely not. I wouldn't be comfortable with that. And I, I, you know, I wouldn't be... I don't get too mad about stuff. I wouldn't be furious with my friend if they did in my bed, but I would. it would bother me a little bit. Find would somewhere else to do it. Now, again... My, di my answer is very different today than it was 30 years ago. When we, when we were, they say it's cool. What's that? Unless they say it's cool. Okay, I, I don't know. Still, Are you, do you ever, still at, at my age, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't do it. I, I would be kind of, this is where my friend has sex. You know what I mean? Yuck, number one. <laughs> how, 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 what's, where, what, what's the words that are trying to come out of my mouth? How do I know how long it's been since they've cleaned their sheets? You know what I mean? But, but, but more than anything... <laughs> When you're a young person, absolutely, hell, you'll do it at any cost, anywhere. As an older person now, I think that's, no, you don't do it in your friend's bed. You know, to me, that's, go get on the floor. Ashley, to, to your point, I think I would forgive someone who did, but I can't imagine going, yeah, you want a bone? Just use my, my <laughs> marriage bed. Really? <laughs> go ahead. When we were young guys, I did it on all my friends' beds. They did it on mine. Hell, I, I would I would take girls into my dad's bedroom and have sex with them. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it was different when I was younger. Now for now, it would be a little weird. I never would have done that. And the only reason why is because my dad's room was bigger and had a bigger bed. Yep. And it was disgusting because I mean, my dad was a heavy, heavy smoker. 
when we were pumping up and down on the sheets, I swear to God, you could see smoke rising from the dam. <laughs> oh, gross. His room smelled like cigarettes, but when you're young, you just you make poor decisions. As a, as a 52-year-old, absolutely no way I'm having sex in any of my friends' beds, and they better not be banging in mine. Oh, I bet you it would smell like smoke afterwards, yeah. too. Those, oh, yeah. Those long ashes are just jumping next to you. <laughs> oh, I yeah. used to get in trouble for people thought I was a smoker because of the, you know, I had four adults in my house that smoked. So I, I got in trouble a few times. Oh. Yeah. Yep. I've been there. I got fired are like, from you a. smell like smoke. I'm like, I, it's not me. I'm in fifth grade. I got fired from a pet sitting job. Because they said I was smoking in their house. What? Yeah. I mean, you know the old story. Again, back to young dudes, young people in general. We'll do it anywhere. We want to get it done. We don't care whose bed it is or how clean. Or I um, had a house party when we were 11th graders, and one of the gals that showed up, man, I was dialed into her. And we had been kind of seeing each other a little bit. And I thought, tonight's the night. I'm going to get her done. She and I are going to have sex. And I don't know, a couple hours into the party, her name was uh, Pissy Missy, of course. And a couple hours into the party, one of my best buddies pulls me aside and says, Oh, man, that was good stuff right there. (laughs) And I said, well, what? Oh, I just had sex with Pissy Missy down in your bed, in your bedroom. And I said... What? <laughs> That's the girl I was trying. He goes, oh, sorry, bro. And by the way, by the way, he left me something down in my bed. I discovered oh. that. You should have had sex with him to get back at her. Right. I mean, if you were thinking, you probably just didn't think about it at I the time. I did not. I was I was pissed <laughs> off, but not. I wasn't going to, you know, unfairly. Hey, hey, my buddy didn't know that I was in love with Pissy Missy. He didn't. I mean, he maybe had some idea, but I didn't get mad. At the, at the time, but I did get mad when I went down to sleep later, and uh, he had left me something cold and wet uh, under yeah. the sheets. Yeah, that's not, that's not cool, it. man. Do you think it's possible maybe she didn't have sex with you, which I don't understand why anyone would turn you out. Honestly, I don't get it. It's I kind of think you're lying. But do you think maybe it's because you called her Pissy Missy that she wasn't too interested? <laughs> Everybody called her Pissy Missy. <laughs> Everyone did? Yes, they did. Is there a story behind it? I mean, is she angry or did she wet her pants? Her or? name wasn't really Pissy Missy. Oh, okay. I was just throwing that in there because I don't want to use her real name. Yeah, that's probably good. But there you go. That was a... Uh, talk about the highs and lows of of growing up. Boy, I was excited for that night. Yeah. That's a bummer. And it only took an hour and a half for my best friend to bang her on my bed. Was it a friend? <laughs> now, I had a couple friends where it makes sense, where I would think, well, yeah, there's no competition. Of course she slept with him. Was it the, that type of friend or one that shocked you? Mm, he he got a lot of action, he this, did? Guy, okay. this guy. And so he, nothing too shock. No, no, he he got a lot of ass. And looking back, I I think it was just, he was just so confident. Because he wasn't like a terribly good looking dude he was just he was very adult for his age and i think girls were drawn to him for that reason so uh it was not shocking no this guy he got some oh these yeah. con- mm-hmm. this conversation has brought back memories of play of like s- s- having sex in certain places at certain times or i'm just like oh i thought i'd block those out forever <laughs> you don't want to remember some of those times yeah like what were you thinking you weirdo <sighs> well name some <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can think of one place for you it's the state fair bathroom floor see that wasn't as like shameful as some other ones where it's like you that know, says something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the location was shameful. You, you're, you're maybe referencing who it was. And and like other people know what's happening. And you're like, oh, you're right next door. You're loud. It's just cringy, cringy, cringy. Hey, Ashley, take it from a recovering slut. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody bats a thousand. Right? That's true. Nobody bats a thousand. Recovering, not recovered. Love that. <laughs> Still I'm not working done on yet. it. I mean, I'm working on it. <laughs> All right. We might as well. We'll head in this direction, Josh, the, the direction of the stupid news, because there's a couple stories in here you got to hear. I- I'm actually pretty damn sure this is a first. I don't believe we've ever discussed this exact 
type of disgusting behavior before in our stupid news. And we've been dumping stupid news reports in our listeners since 1999. Oh, distorted figures walk the street. It's 1999. What song set the world afire? What band Megadeth? What album so far? So good. So what? What year? 1988. But as I was saying, I don't think we've ever covered something quite like this in the stupid news. A big old dude. He's from down there in a town called Spring, Texas. Six foot six, he goes. 250 pounds. Yeah, that's a big man. He goes by the name of Mitchell Vest. And he's up to 60 years old already. Mitchell is known all over town for wandering around everywhere as he goes wearing a kilt. And I think we just found out why a kilt is his favorite outfit. Mitchell was recently caught on security cameras walking into a couple of antique shops in town where he would pick items up off the shelf, ram the items up into his bottom, and then pull them out of there and he'd place the items back on the shelf where they came from. You know, that's so normal for Dana. He just calls it browsing. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how Wapple tests the freshness of butternut squash yeah. at High V. Yeah. It's the only way you're going to know. Yep. It's an old family secret. <laughs> and again, it wasn't very difficult for these store owners to figure out who this was. Keistering antiques in their stores. <laughs> Mitchell is the only person in town who's 6'6 and wears a damn kilt wherever he goes. And the store was tiny. I mean, there's not a lot of place to hide. How do you start something like that? Yeah. Really? Mitchell first entered a joint called the Antique Gallery of Houston. Spring, Texas is near Houston. He walked into the Antique Gallery of Houston, and while he was there, he fired a makeup brush and some hardware in his anus (laughs) and when he felt like those items had spent enough time up there he pushed them out (laughs) and he put them back on the shelf his next stop was a shop called fittingly the curiosity shop the owner a gal called Alicia Osborne told the local cops that uh, old uh, Mud hole Mitch here. Uh, he took an antique bottle opener and a tobacco can and pressed those two things up his bottom. He let them simmer there for a minute or two. Let it marinate. And then he took them out and put them back on the shelf. The story says uh, that in both instances, the merchandise had to be thrown away. Because poop got all over them. Glad they're just throwing them away. I don't think I'm as clean as I could be. I'd probably leave something too. But I, you know, I'll be honest. I've never been tempted to grab an item, put it up my butt, and then set it back on the uh, counter or wherever. Well, come with me this afternoon. I think you'll enjoy yourself. I bet I will. Mitch was easily identified and arrested, and now he's got to go to court for this. This guy needs massive amounts of help. And right effing now. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope, I mean, you know, you, I never would want to wish someone to be super high on drugs, but I hope that's his excuse. I did, You know, I didn't even consider that. I don't know why I didn't consider that, but... I kind of doubt it. I bet they would have mentioned in the stories, you know, hey, by the way, he was high on this or that, but... I mean, this guy scares the hell out of me. He really does. I, I was kind of surprised. I don't know the law um, very well, but I was kind of surprised to read that he, when he got arrested, he signed this and he signed that and they charged him with this and he was free to go. I don't know. This guy scares the hell out of me. Yeah, he should be on a list. This, well, he is now. (laughs) Uh, This here final bit of information might surprise you or or maybe it might not. Uh, Fartbox Mitch or whatever you want to call him, he uh, he has a wife and I wonder what she's capable of. (laughs) She was with him on their keistering trip. Oh, no. Oh. I was hoping she didn't know. To the antique shop. Maybe she doesn't know. I mean, you never... Who knows? I would guess, you know, he, he's 60 years old. I'm guessing they've been married for a while. There probably aren't any secrets. But maybe she's just clueless and has no idea that this is why Mitch always wants to go to the friggin' antique shop. <laughs> Apparently, they come into the shop a lot, and the workers there say they're always very nice. Nice. 
It's bigger when it's warm out, Jesus said. You know, that gives a whole new meaning to try it before you buy it. You're right. Mm. <laughs> Maybe that's what he was going to do at home. Yeah. Nah, this isn't a good fit. <sighs> Distorted figures walk the street. It's 1999. Megadeth set the world afire. You had, uh, not too long ago, told me about a live album I'd never heard of from Megadeth. Oh. And uh, it was awesome. Oh, dude. Listen to that a few times since you mentioned it. It was live from, where were was they? Was it Buenos, Buenos Aires? Argentina. Argentina? Dude. Oh, seven or so? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. What I really like about the crowd is they, they chant Megadeth to the beat of the songs. Um, like, say... What's that one again? Countdown to Extinction? Well, it's off the record, Countdown to Extinction. Uh, just like the pie... I can't come up with the title. Lead Rats. Oh, boy. Yeah, Jerry, Symphony of Destruction. Yeah, Symphony. Yeah, so, the crowd was doing this. To that beat, they're going, Mega Death. Mega Death. Mega Mega Death. 100,000 people. It's really cool to listen to. You should check that out. If you like metal, Mega Death live from, how do you call it, to Argentina, 2007. All right, here we go. For some of us in our early 20s, uh, they're the best times of our lives. For some others, Specifically, young dudes, it can be a difficult time. You know, it's time to grow up, but they're not ready to, or don't know how to, or don't want to grow up. Some dudes get frustrated with where they're at in life once they find themselves in their early 20s. You know, high school is over and done with. They're still living with their parents, and that makes them mad. College didn't work out, and that makes them mad. They don't have much luck with the ladies, and that makes them even more mad. So throw on a side of sexual frustration, in my opinion, that's why a lot of young fellas act so pissed off and unpredictable. They act ridiculous. Well, it can be a stressful time if you haven't had your path picked, you know, and you're seeing your friends move on with their lives. They're, you know, some of them maybe are getting married, actually. Some of them, and then divorced, actually. You know, some of them are getting the real, quote-unquote, real jobs. And Absolutely. if you're stuck, that can be scary. I, Absolutely. I can see certainly some fear and frustration. So if you ask me, all of what I just said is what causes dumbass episodes like this year to take place. And and of course, you always have to factor in social media plays a role in this too. A 24-year-old kid down in Florida has been racing around town causing problems on his electric motorcycle. I've always wanted to try one of those. Have you ever been in an electric uh, motor vehicle? I have, yes. I've had a, I have a couple friends who have those. You like, you like the electric motor vehicle? I, you know, I don't think it's something that I am ready to purchase, but I'll tell you that instant power is pretty infectious, is where you laugh kind of like a moron. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least I did. And then I thought, I'm never going to laugh like a moron again. And then the next time he gunned it, I laughed like a moron. Yep, I definitely I get that. You Farting the, in bathtubs, laughing like a moron. You just got the biggest smile on your face, and then you're like, God, I look like an idiot. All right, so here's this kid. He goes by the name of Javon Gomez. He zips around St. Petersburg, Florida on his cute little motorbike. He does wheelies up and down. He blows through red lights. He goes the wrong way down a one way. He rides on the sidewalks. And he records all of this on one of those helmet cams and tosses the videos up on YouTube to show folks how much of a bad boy he is. I mean, are you even riding a motorcycle if you don't have a GoPro? (laughs) (laughs) When the cops catch up to him, he dumps the finger on him. Oh, and hollers and he hollers F you and to show you how obvious it is that this kid hasn't quite grown up once when the cops rolled up on him he had this direct quote which is straight out of 6th grade he said this to the cops ooh I'm scared <laughs> man <laughs> tough guy so he finally got pinched for real if I ever said that to a cop it would be true <laughs> No, legit, I'm terrified. He finally got pinched for real, and of course, his little YouTube channel helped the cops identify who he is. He was charged with uh, this and that. Oh, the cops had to take a gun from him, too, when he was taken into custody. So, 
All that frustration that he has with himself has now put him in jail. It's the same concept as why we neuter male dogs. It's the same with male dogs as it is with human males. In some cases, whether it be dudes or dogs, there comes a day when having active testicles turns them into an overly aggressive moron. Some can manage it on their own, some cannot. Aren't there cultures where they uh, do castrate folks who have done some terrible things and they think maybe this is going to help their decision making in the future? Those are the stories I've heard, but I can't say for sure. It actually has happened. I mean, I'm sure it's happened, but I don't know if common practice. I wonder if that actually helps. You mentioned that he's ridden wheelies. So when I used to ride, I had a few wicked wheelies in my riding days, zero of which on purpose. (laughs) (laughs) The the ones that I had where someone thought, wow, this guy knows what he's doing, was not on purpose at ever. At all, excuse me. Whether it be human dudes or or male dogs, there comes a point where if they've got active testicles, you say to yourself, uh-oh, something's about to happen. It just is what it is. All right, we can't help but question some of the decision-making that we hear about from drug dealers. And maybe that's not fair because... None of us have ever spent a significant amount of time dealing drugs, but we can't help ourselves. A lot of the mistakes they make are just common sense breakdowns. Like uh, driving through town with an ass load of drugs in a broken car, right? (laughs) Everybody knows that cops pull over broken cars. Yeah. Here's the latest. It was another drug dealer driving through town in California. Cops pulled him over to take a look. This time, a canine cop found pounds and pounds of meth rocks that the dealer hid in a box of dog treats. Why are you hiding your drugs in the first place the dog is going to want to look? What an idiot. That is so stupid. I don't care if it's a stray dog or a police dog. All dogs are motivated by food. Mm -hmm. Unless maybe he thought, well, you know, he's going to smell the dogs. I'll just say he's smelling the treats, obviously. There's... That's what he's. Uh, it, that's what he's indicating at the treats. Oh, like they wouldn't check. There's nothing between this guy's ears. <laughs> Even that canine cop, who's supposed to be focusing on work at the time, as soon as that dog smells treats, it's gonna. It's gonna look there, just in case. Uh, there ended up being a lot of meth rocks in the dog treat box. A 41-year-old lady by the name of Angelina Gutierrez got charged with felony transportation of a controlled substance. There was a methamphetamine pipe in the vehicle, too. The cops also located additional packages of meth inside a cat litter box. So there was a real pet-friendly theme going on here. It's bigger when it's warm out, Jesus said. You know, it's always surprising to him that meth heads can't make good decisions. I'm with you on that. <laughs> I wonder what the common denominator is. I could, I wasn't able to load this clip fast enough for the last story about men thinking with their uh, testicles and, and wieners and whatnot. Sure. Mm-hmm. This was uh, from an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm on Sunday. Ah! What the hell? I just saw your balls. They're hanging out. What is it about my balls that bother you like this? Everything. Balls are disgusting. They're hideous. I think the brain and the balls are related. If you take a, a magnifying glass and you put it on your balls, it's the same pattern as the brain. So like people say, you're thinking with your d-. You know, every now and then you say something so stupid, but it actually makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> I love that show so much. All right, we got time for one more. A Canadian almost got... In real trouble the other night in a town called Fort St. John. Hell, they were driving around town with a beer can riding on the trunk. The picture's good humor. That's so awesome. I don't know how that can of Coors Banquet held on as the car was going this way and that, but it did. It was just before 11 o'clock at night the other night up there in Canada when the cops spotted the beer can riding on the car. They had to pull this guy over. And they had to have been giggling their ass off. <laughs> Beer can balancing on the damn trunk of the car. Uh, the fellas conducted a traffic stop and dumped a breath test on the driver. Driver got a warning. And the Canadian cop said the driver finished their last beer just prior to driving and forgot where they put the beer can. <laughs> In the end, the driver was... The driver had their license suspended for three days Canadian and had their vehicle towed 
the driver and his dog, probably a dingo. There's a lot of those in Canada. The driver and his dingo were forced to walk the rest of the way home. Boop, 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 boop. There they go <laughs> with their warning ticket. I was on the phone with a buddy. He's a trooper. And uh, all of a sudden he's like, yeah, he was filling up at a gas station. He's like, I, I got to go. So uh, he called me back later. And what happened was a dude who was parked. Uh, he just pulled up, parked, opened his car door, ralphed everywhere, closed the car door, and started driving out. And the guy, I guess, was incredibly drunk. Oh, uh, man. And sometimes man. people make it easy for the cops. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's got to be fun. Right that, in front of them. Right in front of He <laughs> showed me the dash cam video. Oh. <laughs> Do you guys know anybody who puts something or another up on the lid of their car and then drives away and loses it forever? I was I've just, done that before with, like, a coffee mug. Have you? I was just going to say, I've seen that at a gas station as well where someone puts their purchase on top of the hood to open up the door yeah. and completely forgets <laughs> oh, about it. it sinks. Well, I had a... One of my one of my oldest buddies was notorious for this for a while, and I don't know how he broke himself of this habit, but I believe twice he had a bad habit of when he was filling up with gas, he'd put his wallet up on the lid of the car, and then he'd drive away and lose his wallet. I think it happened. And to he him. did it more than once. I think it happened to him twice. Oh, that would absolutely suck. Wallet up on the lid of the car, fills her up. So long, suckers, and so long, wallet. What can you do? People are spacey. I, I I have that problem. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. A okay. Lot of, a lot what? of my friends would uh, lose stuff because they put it on their laps and then they get out of the car and then they drop it on the ground. Oh, uh, forget. I done that with my breaks. phone. We would always call that the stoner move because <laughs> you'd get high and then just put stuff on your lap. You what? know what? That did happen a lot more when I was smoking weed. <laughs> 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 Drinking would usually cause me to put something in my lap (laughs) that I would regret later. But weed, sure, it all plays a role. Sports on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Oh, no, this is not good. We've got punches being thrown. This is really bad. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, full team fight. Coaches in the middle of it. Someone got a nick on the face there. This is not what you want to see after that close of a game. It has been a great game. We've got everything going on right now. Oh, my goodness. Someone in the crowd was hurt and hit. It looks like a young girl. Well, we got a manager that has blood on his face, and we still got guys that need to get to the locker room. That's hilarious. Hey, uh, Josh, you know what makes me a total ass wagon? What? I think I left all my information on the printer over there. Oh, there is a lot of stuff. Didn't I? I'm a friggin' idiot. I print off this stuff, and then I... That was audio of a... Thank you, Josh. That was audio of a fight. Oh, Did you get too close it. to the printer? I, as I was sitting back on my chair and knocked it off. Oh, Are we it. done printing for the day? That's it. <laughs> oh, that is a mess. Big friggin' fight at a college basketball game last night. I will say the only thing that I'm I'm kind of happy about is that for once it wasn't clickbait when it said massive brawl breaks out. <laughs> that was a pretty good one. That was a pretty good one. You heard the announcers there. They don't even know what the hell they're looking at. Uh, not exactly a marquee matchup. Incarnate World and Texas A&M Commerce. <laughs> this is Southland Conference stuff. You, you barely ever heard of these teams. But they uh, they wanted to kill each other after that ball game. There was one little guy who, uh, he wasn't in uniform, so I don't know what his, you know, his role is with the team. Little bearded guy that took like four Dude, punches yeah. from a guy twice his size, and it didn't phase him at all. That guy can take a punch. That's scary. He's this got the toughest on, uh... face in the in the conference. Uh, you would not want to meet that guy at the bar. No. <laughs> you just watch that go down, and you're like, okay, I'm going to leave. Yeah, you can't hurt that guy. See, you know exactly what I'm talking about, Bob? Yep. That was crazy. Yep. People had blood on their face. Apparently some little girl got walked on by these morons beating each other half to death there on the basketball court. If you want to have some laughs, the video is uh, up on our website. Uh, we got plenty to cover here when Randy Shaver stops by in about a half hour. The Daytona 500. What in the hell happened at the XL <laughs> Energy Center yesterday? <laughs> we'll get into that. There's an NBA All-Star game. Yeah, that well. out. Unbelievable. So we got uh, we got time to cover it all with, uh, with the Ash Man. For now, we'll take a break, and Josh will be coming back with his news report. Have-assed morning show. Is it loud?
drug, they lose control, they do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our experienced and certified technicians at Standard Heating have been trusted to keep our fellow Minnesotans comfortable and confident for over 90 years. We're ready to do the same for you, providing comfort you deserve since 1930. Standard Heating is having their 94-year celebration. They have special offers just for you this February. Whether you need a new furnace or a tune-up, they have something special for everyone. Visit standardheating.com to save today. Hey, it's Rich Eisen here. Join me and my compadre, Chris Brockman, every Monday on the Overreaction Monday podcast as we dive into the latest headlines across the NFL playoffs. Are you ready, Chris Brockman? Just as handsome as ever, buddy. I appreciate you saying that, and I wish I could say the same to you. There is a ton to overreact to, as now every other team that didn't make the playoffs, they're already looking forward to next year. Come react or overreact with us leading up to the big game. Overreact. Action Monday, wherever you listen. Half assed morning show. 93X. He's our hero. He is. You know, we will never repay him for what he did. What he did for us was life changing. A Florida sheriff's deputy has been hailed a hero for rescuing a six month old baby trapped in a wrecked car and giving her life saving treatment moments after witnessing a crash from his patrol vehicle. A motorcycle going more than 100 miles per hour sped past Charlotte County Deputy Sergeant Dave Musgrove just after 7.30 p.m. February 8th and then slammed into a vehicle carrying a mother and two small children. I remember looking to my left and I just see him and a big bright light. About 10 seconds after that motorcycle passed, I saw a flash in the distance, a cloud of smoke. As Sergeant Musgrove rushed to check on the victims, he heard the driver yell to him pleading to help her children. The dramatic rescue was captured on dash cam and Musgrove's body cam shows the officer removing a three-year-old child named Ariel from a booster seat and the mother telling him there's another baby named Lola in the car as well. In the wreckage, Musgrove found the car seat with the baby who was apparently unconscious. Video shows the officer quickly beginning chest compressions on baby Lola until she began to breathe again. Since the crash, Musgrove has checked in daily on Lola, including making visits and phone calls. Sheriff Bill Prummel commend, uh, commended Musgrove's actions. <clears throat> Pretty dramatic video. You can see that on 93x.com. It's very heroic stuff. Indeed. And thanks to some Minnesota firefighters, a dog is recovering after falling through an icy lake north of the Twin Cities. Firefighters raced to the rescue Sunday morning on Little Elk Lake near Zimmerman, retrieving the dog and bringing him back to the fire station for some oxygen and warm blankets. <laughs> Malax County Animal Care and Protection took the dog to an area animal hospital, and the dog was eventually reunited with its very appreciative owner. And what the hell boy? is that dog doing out there on the lake? Fishing. Well, yeah, it wants to go ice fishing. A scary moment caught on an officer's dash cam shows his patrol vehicle overturned during a high-speed chase of a stolen U-Haul earlier this month. Footage released by an Arkansas police department from February 7th shows several cars pursuing the suspect in a U-Haul van where they were traveling at speeds of over 120 miles per hour. That's one fast van. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The officer used a pit maneuver to end the chase, but it resulted in his squad flipping and rolling several times before coming to a rest on the shoulder. You can see this on 93x.com. Officers arrested two 21-year-old Michigan men who in total struck four patrol vehicles along with more cars from other agencies. They were also wanted in Michigan for trying to run over several officers. Oh! Inside the van, police found firearms and Molotov cocktails. Dude. The officer who overturned was taken to a nearby hospital, luckily with just some minor injuries. That's also quite the crash right there. Newly released body cam showed a chaotic encounter between Florida police officers and a drunk driver last month. January 23rd, officers with the Florida City Police Department were investigating a robbery when they uh, saw 19-year-old Giovanni Mendez Simon. He crashed into a patrol car, hitting one officer and narrowly missing another. In the video, the officer is seen calling for help on his radio before going to help the driver out of his vehicle. As the cop took him out of the vehicle, the man began sobbing. After some time, they handcuffed the man who's heard on the video saying he was going through a bad moment and crying when the accident happened. Oh, don't cry, man. He said it was only his second time drinking and didn't know how to hold his alcohol. According to the officer, the teen had beer cans, quote, all over the car. Oh, geez, dude. His second time drinking, honey. 
just didn't know his limits. Decided to max out on road sodas, huh? I guess so, yeah. Driving and crying. Yep. That was a band, wasn't it, Josh? It was a band back in the day. A Florida man who allegedly blocked a vehicle illegally parked in a handicapped spot from leaving was arrested for causing a scene, then called 911 to complain about the responding officers. 39-year-old Nicholas Taylor accused, or caused, that is, a scene at a Wawa gas station last Friday. The Lady Lake Police Department said Taylor called 911 after he noticed a vehicle parked in a handicapped space at the gas station despite not having a handicap permit. He then marched into the store and caused a scene inside, police said. He also allegedly threatened to fight the person who parked in the spot. <laughs> <laughs> he was heard saying, do you want to fight? Police noted. Oh, my God. When the driver of the vehicle attempted to leave, Taylor stood behind the car until police arrived, continuing to threaten to fight the other driver. During an investigation, he was unsteady on his feet and smelled of alcohol, police allege. Ah, yes. Now we know why. The responding officers warned Taylor if he were to get behind the wheel of the car, they were going to arrest him. But he argued with the cops, police claim, and demanded a sergeant be sent to the scene. That's right. I want to talk to your manager. Despite (laughs) the officer saying he was the sergeant on duty, Taylor ignored him and dialed 911 to complain about the officers. Ultimately, he was arrested and taken to the Lake County Jail. Mm. My uncle's a quadriplegic, and, you know, he's not usually the type of person that's going to confront someone, but he does get fed up, you know, with people parking in handicapped spots and they don't have their placard or whatever. And so finally he had enough and he yelled at a guy from his van. He's yelling at this guy, you son of a bee, you can't be parking there. I'm sick and tired of people doing this. And the guy just, he took it, you know, he didn't react much at all. Mm -hmm. And then got out, grabbed his crutches, and he only had one leg. Oh! My God. Nuts. The one time, my uncle's like, the one time I ever oh. say anything. I would just son roll up my window and leave. Oh, I wouldn't even like, apologize. It's just, uh, you know I feel bad. Oh, he apologized. Oh. But he, he's like, I unloaded on this guy and I've never done that in my life. And lo and behold, uh, he just didn't have his placard with him. Do you oh. think he'll ever do it again? No. <laughs> no. I Get think... out of the car, you <laughs> able-bodied bastard. <laughs> Show yourself. You with your legs, you probably don't even, you take it for granted, I bet. <laughs> I bet you got both of them there. Oh. Oklahoma City police are searching for a woman after she reportedly got into an altercation over endless shrimp. Police said the woman, along with a man, got into a fight with restaurant staff and began smashing plates, becoming verbally aggressive after they told her that their policy doesn't really promise endless shrimp that customers can take home. Muscle tough. Seven years old or something. <laughs> As one employee tried to call 911, the man hit the phone right out of her hand, then the two left without paying their bill. <laughs> they know who these folks are and they do plan to arrest them. He oh, knocked the phone him. out of her hand. I like that. That's a good that's a good bit. Yeah, they thought they could just load up as much shrimp as they wanted and just bring it home. It says endless. Show up with a five gallon bucket. Yeah, just load her up. A New York woman used an ingenious tactic to escape from an unhinged man who pulled a knife on her earlier this month. She claimed she had COVID and coughed in his direction. What? Jane Duncan was taking her usual walk February 4th when a known local criminal suddenly jumped in front of her and pulled a knife out of his pocket. The man, known in the neighborhood as Matthew, asked, Why are you harassing me? when he whipped out the weapon. As he was pulling the knife, I started coughing all over the place, 52-year-old Jane Duncan said. I was like, I've got COVID, and I'm on my way to the ER, she said. The two had no prior confrontation, so she didn't know what he was talking about. So far, the man hasn't been charged. Yeah, don't they say also, like, you pee your pants or something like that? Yeah, uh uh-huh. Kind of freaks folks out. And once the doctors check out this COVID, I'm going to have them look into the herpes. (laughs) (laughs) A New York man inadvertently called the cops on himself when he reported a burglary at the location where he was running a secret meth lab, which authorities compared to the show Breaking Bad. 23-year-old Matthew Lasinski called 911 to report a burglary at his purported business establishment, uh, Quantitative Laboratories, LLC. Oh, that sounds like a serious place to work. Yeah, it does. (laughs) Quantitative Laboratories, LLC, LLC, just LLC. I'll be. Yeah, it sounds like they probably have like, I don't know, health insurance and a 401k (laughs) plan. When officers arrived at the scene, they found broken glass at the building's entrance. They also discovered what appeared to be a clandestine meth lab. 
Apparently, uh, the defendant was operating a Breaking Bad-style drug lab, cop said, quote-unquote, and tried to conceal it under the guise of a legitimate business. He then inadvertently turned himself in when he reported a burglary occurred at that same business, District Attorney Raymond Tierney said. Police also recovered $40,000 in cash, an undisclosed amount of ecstasy, over three ounces of meth, and over 625,000 milligrams of pure ketamine. Mm. Ooh. The DA said officers found about two dozen 55-gallon drums con- uh, containing a, a drug similar to GHB, also known as the date rape drug. So this guy was a real piece of crap. And now he's going to be behind bars. Good. He pleaded guilty to nine charges last week. Who's quanticated now, tough guy, right? <laughs> I don't man, know what I'm talking about. A man's in custody after airport officials helped to uncover over three pounds of meth sent from Mexico to Minnesota. On February 1st, the airport police department notified members of the Central Minnesota Violent Offenders Task Force about a suspicious package they intercepted addressed to Rice, Minnesota, containing 3.285 pounds of meth. A detective disguised himself as a UPS employee and brought the package to the address. A man, later identified as the 24-year-old suspect, retrieved the package from the disguised officer and said it was for him. Police executed a search warrant on the home a few minutes later and arrested three men. That kind of killed my weekend. I was expecting that Mexico <laughs> meth. Yeah, what are you going to do without it now? I couldn't party, that's for sure. Mexico uh, meth. Mexico meth, yeah. I thought, like, you could make that stuff anywhere. Is the Mexican stuff a little better, more authentic in some way? Or I'm not yeah, sure what I don't know. know. Maybe it's like the Coca-Cola they have down there, like the pure grain sugar. Just a little of, different? Yeah. Well, they just say, like, the the... the yeah, the cocaine you get from down there is better, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always thought meth was like you got a bathtub? Meth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Make your own. Yeah. Have some chemicals, stir them up. A woman arrested in East Texas is being accused of staying overnight in a Walgreens, vandalizing the bathrooms, and leaving with a backpack full of stolen merchandise. Employees at Walgreens Pharmacy were about to unlock the front door last Tuesday when they noticed a woman in a robe walking around inside the store and then called police. It's very comfortable. Yeah. I bet. I've never owned a robe, but they do look comfy. Really? Oh, I've got two. You can have one. They're very big. Oh, awesome. Mine (laughs) says, I've got one you can borrow, Josh. On the back, it says, Nature Boy. (laughs) (laughs) When Texarkana officer Jonathan Price arrived, the woman reportedly walked out the front door and started down the sidewalk while wrapped in a blanket, this time carrying a backpack. When Price uh, asked the woman, please say, uh, when asked her name, she initially told him it was money sign and tried to walk away before being arrested. (laughs) She was identified as 32-year-old Brooke Shimnick. From what we can tell, she somehow managed to hide out in the store last night when they closed and then spent the morning working her art project in the restrooms and eating and drinking, police said. Good Lord. Bryce reportedly found wine, cigarettes, markers, notebooks, and chocolate (laughs) from Walgreens. Uh, Store employees reported that she used a Sharpie to write all over the bathroom stalls. Daddy, your mom's number was already on there. <laughs> yeah, figure as much. That's a real character right there. When the, when the cops asked her what her name was, she said money sign? Money sign. Honestly, with the way people name their kids now, I wouldn't be that surprised if that was true. That it was money sign? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? You're right. We're in the right generation for that. Duluth police said its drone unit played a pivotal role in the arrest of an assault suspect early Tuesday morning. Officers were first called at about 6 a.m. to a residence on a report of a man who'd been injured by a small shovel during a fight. Police say they established a perimeter in the neighborhood and a drone was deployed. Members of the DPD's drone team relayed information to officers to help pinpoint the suspect's location inside a residence and alert them to the ideal moment to make a raid. The 42-year-old suspect was arrested without incident. Do you think that'll be a TV show? Drone Drone cops? (laughs) That'd be cool. I'd watch that. You know what? I would too. They get in the same problems that regular cop duos get into. They're just drones. (laughs) Well, you're saying like the drones don't get along? Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of a rivalry between them? Yeah, there's a good drone, a bad drone. (laughs) Two people were injured by an illegal firework set off inside a Fridley home Saturday night. Oh, that sounds like fun. Oh, yeah. I hope it wasn't too bad. The victims are expected to recover. Police say the Minneapolis bomb squad was called out to make sure there was no further danger. That case is still under investigation. Setting off fireworks inside the house. Yeah, I'd imagine that wasn't on purpose, but I guess you never know. On ABC tonight, the sixth season premiere of The Rookie, followed by the seventh season premiere of The Good Doctor. Sweet. Which one? 
Both. Bo- I'm you excited like both for of them? both. Yeah, Sean Murphy had a baby. I'm he's sorry. He's a good doctor. He is. is <laughs> yeah, he the, he's the main, the main guy. He's the doctor. Yep. <laughs> I know the rookie's very popular. It's you know, it's funny. My uh, neighbor kid. He's 12, and it's his absolute favorite show. I wouldn't expect <laughs> so that. Random. Good for him. Yeah, he comes over, and he'll, he'll, the other kids are playing, and he'll sit there and watch The Rookie. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> then on Netflix, the stand up special Mike Epps, ready to sell out. Dude, Mike Epps, are you kidding me? I saw him the other night uh, as part of some of the NBA All Star coverage. That guy just. That guy's very funny. Oh, he mm-hmm. can be super funny for sure. Day Day. He played the role of Day Day and. Mm. Next Friday, didn't he, Wapple? Yeah. Remember what uh, that what the gal did to his car? Oh, you don't do that. And then she sprayed the player. <laughs> she sprayed the pimp. The man credited for bringing the mustache back, Miles Teller of Top Gun Maverick 37. <laughs> World Series winning pitcher and producer of the infamous Kate Upton Million Man March, Justin Verlander 41. <laughs> Cindy Crawford 58 today, Charles Barkley 61. Congratulations to broken lifted 79 Chevy Jesus getting initiated into the IBEW tonight. He said it's a life-changing career move for him. We're pumped for you, bro. Congratulations again. Good luck to former rug-slinging Jesus headed to a job interview this morning. Happy 30th to dinky-doo trucker butt Jesus. And short but fat Jesus sent in a nice happy birthday wish to the best daughter in the whole world, hers, Morgan. Happy 20th today. And that's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver. Put that ass. Put that ass. Put that ass. On the Half-Assed Morning Show. Unbelievable afternoon here in St. Paul. Zuccarello. Erickson in. Scores! The hat trick makes it 6 5 Minnesota. Kaprizov takes it away, fires and scores! A third hat trick in the game. It's 10 7 with 1.9 to go. And what's his name? Anthony LaPanta? He definitely gets enough sleep at night. <laughs> he, he is pumped. He's, he's looking for Ray Finkel and a clean pair of shorts <laughs> after yesterday's game. Uh, here comes Randy Shaver from the Care 11 News Program. Uh, Good morning. He's set to morning. join us for a stretch of time. How you feeling today, old timer? I'm getting there. You know, yesterday on our program, you sounded like deep fried ass. Yeah. And then last night, I turned on your television news and you came off all fresh and healthy. Did you Did you take some Dayquil or get, something I'm like that? I'm getting better. I, I I can't explain what's going on, but I'm getting better. You passed it on to me, Randy. Thanks. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no way. Weird. Ashley's not feeling well. <laughs> no, I think my stupid boyfriend got me sick. Well, your boyfriend. <laughs> well, I don't like to hear any of that. All right, Randy. Welcome to the program. And yeah, what the hell happened in St. Paul yesterday? <laughs> I don't, you know, absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy finish. I that guess third the, period was insane. <laughs> you know what's a real shame is this was a one o'clock game when most folks are working. A great well, majority of hockey fans yeah. weren't able to see the friggin' game True. when it was happening. That's a damn shame. Because this was like a circus sideshow. Yeah. <laughs> My sons were there and said it was absolutely awesome. I bet. Yeah. And a few people texted and said they were there as well, but they left. Oh. They missed it. Oh. They didn't wait. For the they third. didn't wait. <laughs> you, you had to be there. Yeah. The boys are playing at home yesterday. Oddball President's Day matinee. They're down 5 3 to Vancouver going into the third stanza. And from there, they dumped seven goals on the Canucks to win the game by a field goal. 10-7. 8-7 if you don't count empty net goals, which you shouldn't. But I mean, this is how fast and furious this was yesterday. Uh, I didn't see a lick of it. I think I texted everyone yesterday, Nikki no watch yeah. hockey <laughs> uh, 1 o'clock on Mondays. That's when Nikki go nappy <laughs> 1 o'clock on Mondays. So I didn't see a lick of this hockey game. But this is how mental it was. Two separate websites had not only separate stats, different stats, but a different final score. I looked at one website yesterday, it said 9-7. Clicked over to another, it said 10-7. One website said that the Russian kid had four goals. Another website said it had three goals. So I think the media who was covering this game, their head was spinning so fast by what was happening, they didn't didn't even know what the final final was. Couldn't keep track fast enough. 
But what I have in front of me now, the official numbers say that Jewel Erickson Eck picked up a hat trick. Right. So did the Russian kid. And they both, I believe, each had three assists to go along with that. So six points each. And they erased this deficit. I mean, I could go on all day long. Down 5-2 with less than a minute to play in the third. They went from there. They went on to score six unanswered. In the, in the second. Yeah. Got, yeah. I'm sorry. And, and now i got to start all over again. <laughs> Down 5-2 <coughs> with less than a minute to play in the second period. From there, they went on to score six unanswered goals. Five in the first five minutes of the third period. Right. Three of those goals were on five-on-three power plays. So the Canucks kind of got themselves in terrible trouble. So, as far as I know, just like the media yesterday, there's so much information here that it's tough to keep track of. They set the record. It's the Pigs' all-time record for goals scored in a single game. Did they never score 10 goals before? In the history, I can't, I can't remember them doing that. They set the franchise record for most goals in a single period with those yeah. seven goals in the third. And with the two clubs just pumping pucks into the net all afternoon long, most combined goals in a game at 17. It looked like the NBA All-Star game. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of folks were making that comparison. And the Canucks, for one reason or another, I couldn't tell you because I still haven't seen them play, the Canucks were, record-wise, best club in the league. So there are some people saying, this is the beginning of a whole new operation. This should be the springboard for great things for the rest of the season. We'll it's, see about that. It's too bad it's only worth two points. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, should, you should get a couple extra points for the mm. out, output that you put out there. But the, the two points are huge because now, here we are, there are two points out of a playoff spot. So all this hard work that they've been putting in could pay off here. They're only two points back of St. Louis with only one team basically in front of them, and that's Nashville. Bad day to be a goaltender, huh? (laughs) Yeah. I'll be dipped. I think there's more here. Okay. So Kaprizov, Erickson Eck, and a kid for the Vancouver Canucks that goes by the name of J.T. Miller all had hat tricks the last time an nhl game had three different players record hat tricks was back in 1992 in a matchup between the la kings and the san jose sharks where luke robitaille lucky luke yari curry and a fella named mike donnelly each popped in three goals apiece that's a long time ago yeah so, I mean, what a what an absolute gong show yesterday at the X. <coughs> Again, too bad this wasn't a 7 o'clock Friday night game. Every swing and D in the state of Minnesota would be on board with this hockey club. Your kids got to go, though, huh, Cubby? Yeah, they went yesterday. That's awesome. So, okay, next what up, they, they to play tonight. Right? They play tonight at Winnipeg. Do I have that right? You do. Yeah. Tonight at Winnipeg. Oh, and isn't the can we see Wapple somewhere? Sure can. I think the the Muppet Show World Tour makes a stop in gorgeous West St. Paul. Does it not, Wapple? Yeah, we'll be at Boulevard Tavern from seven to nine tonight with Coors Light. We'll be handing out wild sweet tickets. Seven to nine, West St. Paul. That's not too far from my house. Are you going to come? I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, (laughs) Josh, you should. I was looking at their website, uh, and today is Tijuana Tuesdays at Boulevard Tavern. You know, (laughs) why why would you do that? (laughs) How have you ever missed? to Tijuana Tuesday. <laughs> Tijuana Tuesday. Thought we were friends. <laughs> yeah, that was a douche move. <laughs> that resist. one stung a little bit. <laughs> All right, there you go. Yeah, I don't I don't know that I've ever seen anything like that before in a professional hockey game. I'm racking oh. my brain. But I mean Not not here anyway. Yeah, definitely not. In well. video games, sure. I can't think of it anywhere else. Yeah, not here. Anywhere else? Hell, I don't know. Uh, I'm, we missed this yesterday. Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins pulled off a cute trick at their home game Sunday. They retired Yaramir Yager's number 68 sweater. And they also paid tribute to him 
in another way, uh, the Penguins' current roster took the ice all wearing his old Penguins jersey, and they also were wearing Yager wigs. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> to pay tribute to his sweet-ass hairdo that he used to haul around from city to city when he was a prominent NHL player. Boy, did I hate his guts. <laughs> I'll be totally honest with you. For many years, I hated the sight of Yaramir Yager. He and Mario Lemieux just made me want to puke all over myself. I got over it. It's been a tough year for Pittsburgh. They're way back in the playoffs. Have they been struggling? They are nine points out of a playoff spot. It has been a tough year. Yeah, well, Yager still laces them up once in a while back in his in his hometown doesn't mm-hmm. he plays for some local clubs horses around a little bit he was fun to watch it's just i had a hard time embracing the pittsburgh penguins of the early 90s hated them every last one of them what else is going on okay so the nba all-star game a couple days ago was garbage it has been for years It was worse this year, though. I'll go along with it. I haven't watched regularly. I would say this year was just an absolute joke. Okay. So since it's fresh on basketball fans' minds, now we get conversations on websites everywhere on how to fix it. Uh, My answer is you can't. No. So just forget it. You know we no because the players are not going to be committed to actually playing the game the right way. No. For fear that they could get hurt or right. something like that. Right. So. Like we discussed a few years ago with the Pro Bowl in the right. NFL. Just forget it. Just name players to a list at the end of the year and that's it. Right. The NFL has come up with this. I mean, I, I think the skills competition is something that if they were to expand on that somehow, I mean, it's all about money. So if you're going to do an all-star event similar to what the NFL does... You've got to come up with some sort of pseudo thing that everybody can get on board with so that you still draw people there for two nights or whatever to make money. And, you know, they're talking about expanding the skills competition, maybe doing one-on-one, players one-on-one kind of a tournament thing. Right, right. Things they'd, like they'd, that. See, I, I saw that idea, too, the one-on-one <laughs> thing. They'd still find a way to make that lazy and uneventful. But, but here's the deal. Okay. For, go ahead. If you want guys slam dunking the basketball and doing the three-point shooting, go ahead. Keep up with that. I'm talking about the all-star game itself, where you pit the East versus West or whatever the system is. We talked about this when the NFL Pro Bowl started to go down the toilet a number of years ago. And, okay, so what did the NFL do? They, they turned it into this silly flag football. Flag football. Skill. What? Yeah. Totally unnecessary. But here's something for you, Randy. You were asking yesterday whether or not the players are paid to play, other than their contractual bonuses. It says here, theoretically, there is some incentive to care when you're playing in the NBA All-Star game. It says here the winning team gets $100,000, the losing the players each get $100,000, the losing players get $25,000. Not a small number to most of us, but it's no, a drop in the bucket. The- Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a drop in the bucket, which is a great song off of David Lee Ross' record, Little Ain't <laughs> Enough, from 1991. Uh, for, for these NBA players, that, that's jack squat. When you consider that uh, guys that make the All-Star game are normally the superstars of the league. Right. And are getting paid millions of dollars. Right. This mm-hmm. is not much of an incentive. So. Even Anthony Edwards was uh, quoted, uh, I don't know, someone asked him what he thought about the current state of the All-Star game, and he said... Uh, it's it's just it's fun it's a break he says it's a break so i don't think anyone wants to come here and compete i don't know what they can do to make it more competitive i don't know i think everyone looks at it it's it's like it's a break so i don't think nobody want to come here and compete (laughs) right which is fun for the fans we're going to get to some ideas as to how to fix it in just a minute now people have been texting in ever since we brought up yaramir yager wanting to know if i've seen his 28 year old girlfriend uh, no i have not very very attractive and he is my age he's 52 53 
Oh, Lord. Right? Well, let's look this up. <laughs> Army mechanic Jesus. Uh, 52. 52. He, he, uh, he recommended that we look up the quote he had about his girlfriend. The quote, he, oh, okay. Someone led me to believe that she had a quote, but this is a quote from Yaramir himself. Maybe she did as well, but uh, so I looked it up, and I, I wanted to grab the audio, but it's got a lot of F-bombs in it, so I won't be able to play it right now. Okay. Uh, he said of his 29-year-old girlfriend, she's too young to remember I played in Pittsburgh, and so apparently that one cracked everybody <laughs> up. <laughs> He is a funny guy. He's proven himself to be a funny guy. Like when he he shacked up with some 19-year-old supermodel a number of years ago, right? And this gal was a scumbag. You know, she was opportunistic about it. It looks like his daughter. Yeah, oh, it's it really weird. Does. It's so Wait a minute. Weird. Dominica. You're, you're saying that his current girlfriend looks a lot like his daughter? Yeah. Well, it just looks could, like could him. Be. Oh, oh, his I daughter. see. Looks like it could be. Well, sure, yeah. it, she could be. I thought you meant that they actually looked alike. Which I mean, they, they, they kind of do us. look alike. Well, then that's kind of creepy. Oh, that's so creepy. But anyway, remember this? When Yarmir, he hit the sack with some 19-year-old supermodel, and the only reason she did it was to try to blackmail him. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So she jumps on social media while they're asleep, well, while... while the next morning after they had a great sex, story. Yaramir's asleep because he's yeah. an old man. He needs to. He just got done banging a 19-year-old. He needs some rest. <laughs> so he's out cold. She takes pictures of the two of them, selfies. And then she puts it on social media and like tries to blackmail him, saying, if you don't do this or that for me, I'll tell everyone that uh, you and I had sex last night. And Yaramir got on social media and said, go ahead. I've already told everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What's the problem? He said, yeah, tell everybody. I'm in the process of doing that right now. There's always something that doesn't sit right with me with, with a guy that, that can't date somebody around his same around the same age as him. Like Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. type of thing? Yeah, like there's something wrong with you that you can't land, you know, a something woman wrong, your age. Something wrong with you. What the hell? What are you, what's that supposed to mean? I don't know. I've always, I've always thought that. So like you, the, don't, you don't like people who... Then we're not talking about dating. We're talking about conquering here, Ashley. Conquering. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, that's what that's what he's doing, right? He's just having sex with as many babes as he can get his hands on. So you don't like wide age gaps? There's something unnerving nah, about yeah, that. Yeah, there's to you? always been something unnerving about that. Okay. It's like the age gap thing's weird because once you get to a certain age, then it seems fine. Meaning what exactly? Like, if you have a really big age gap when you're older, it, it's totally fine. But if you're younger, it, it's wrong. It's well, there wrong, are, I mean, there are adults say. at that point, yeah. but you're you know, right. Like, like a 20, yeah. what, like what a do we got 20, here? Like a 20-year-old dating like a 60-year-old is weird. But then once you're like... A hundred and she's sixty. If you're like forty, uh, we know what you mean. We know what you mean. You're dating yeah. like a seventy-year-old. That's so like a one. You well, ask, I, I actually, I'd like it if you'd give us more examples. Give us some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the math here. Yeah, Keep I, going. We get it. So you have a problem with age gaps, Wapple? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess until you get to like a certain point, then I then explain I feel that like to fine. us again. The certain point. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I didn't know this about the two of you. You, you get uh, you you get a little uh, iffy when it comes to age gaps. Yeah, definitely. Until it happens to you. <laughs> nah, no, it, it never will. No, that's gross. That's weird. I feel like like thirty five. Once you get older than thirty five, it's like all right, go ahead and you know whatever age gap. I'd say max 10. Max 10 for sure. You guys have a lot of stipulations. <laughs> wow. I didn't realize this either about my coworkers. No. I mean, so Ashley, what are you now? 27, 28? 26. 26. I mean, again, you don't know until you get there yourself. Yeah, me personally, because my age, I don't think I'd date anybody over the age of 30, just because I feel like the maturity level is going to be so different. But I'm just saying, if if you met a 54-year-old guy who was just the absolute most incredible guy you've ever met, perfect for you in every way, nah, you you would what, what, you can't say nah. Yeah, I can because that's weird. What? I'll stand on that hill until the day I die. All right, fair <laughs> enough. What, what was your age gap again? Um, I said 10 years, but like uh, just because I'm under 30, I think it'd be it'd be a little different if I dated somebody over the age of 30, just like I said, because of the maturity level. But if I was, you know, in my 30s, 
someone in their late 30s, I wouldn't mind. The but, guy is but, an absolute dream come true in every possible way. You would say no. He wouldn't be a dream come true because he's old. Okay. So <laughs> you could go for a 19-year-old then? No, I don't know. I don't date anybody younger than me. Oh, okay. Mm-mm. I missed that part. So many people are saying what's acceptable is you take your age, divide it by two, and then you add seven or eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the old rule of that's thumb. The, that's the math. A lot yeah, of people know this one. Do that again for me? You take your age. My age. Yep. You you cut that in half. Okay. And then you add seven or eight, and that's what's acceptable. Everyone has their little thing, I guess. I didn't I didn't know you had these life rules, Wapple and I, Ashley on. I but if I went by that rule, I don't think I could date a twenty two year old. Well, yeah, I don't she'd never it, want you. Yeah, to, right? <laughs> yeah I don't. I, I think you have to think about it yeah. by in her perspective. She's not going to want to date you either. <laughs> no one wants to date me. <laughs> Somehow we're going to have to break this to all the eligible twenty-two year olds. <laughs> for right, the news we, we, conference, we get it. We get it. You guys don't like large age gaps. It makes you uncomfortable for some reason. But can Wapo or pardon me, Josh? You don't happen to have a side by side picture of. Uh, Yager's girlfriend and Yager's daughter, do you? Oh, no. I, I okay. have. I, here's a picture of his girlfriend. Uh, that's a picture of a, a planet. What? Oh, how'd that happen? <laughs> planet. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. My, my, it was just a computer. The computer scrolled. Oh, she looks like a very, very good looking lady. She looks like a, an actress. I can't think of her. You know what I found? You know, she looks like Schwarzenegger's wife at first glance. A little bit. Okay. Mm, yeah. You know what I found interesting a number of years ago? Josh and I knew a guy who married. It didn't last long. But he married a woman that looked exactly like him. Ooh. Mm. And... What's the opposite like they of They wore that? the same glasses and they everything. Look, they looked like really? brother and sister. Yeah. Really? Very I've much so. I've seen yes. that before. It kind of weirds me out. He looked, me like, he looked like her and she looked like him. I mean, they were around the same height, everything. I'm not going to take a stand like Wapple and Ashley and say that it's wrong <laughs> to date someone or marry someone that looks like you, but it was just interesting to look at. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen a couple mm-hmm. or a few of those couples for sure. All right. Wow, we was what everyone's saying about Wapple. Oh, not Wapple. Uh, <laughs> Yarmir uh, Yarmir Yager's twenty-eight-year-old girlfriend. My twenty-eight-year-old girlfriend. What are you gonna do? All right. We were talking about the NBA All Star Game and how to fix it. I only saw one good idea, Randy Shaver. I only saw one good idea. This article from Uprocks. They're talking about more money. As a, as a reward for winning the game. These guys, they, they don't they, need any... That, that's not going to work. No, it's not going to work, and they don't deserve any more friggin' money. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else did they talk about in here? I had it. Here it is. Moving it to the summer. No. Not going to make any difference. Either. Not going to make any difference. It, you're, you're interrupting their time off. That's not going to work. This is the one I like, because it's cold as ice. Ban the losers from playing the next year. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. If you, I, I, if, I don't, I don't think that's incentive either because th- they'll take the break. They'll say fine. I'll, okay, I'll, but I'll, but doesn't I'll it I'll sound sit. at least in theory it's kind of fun and cold blooded? What about a three game suspension? Ooh, oh, let's just pretend that that's a motivating factor for these guys, that they appear on television in front of millions of people at the All-Star Game. Let's just pretend that that is important to them. If it is, that's a cool, kind of a mean idea. If you play in the All-Star Game and your team loses, you're not allowed to come back next year. Now, what changes things there for me is, you know, you get 12 guys, like uh, the Western Conference team from this year that got beat. That means no LeBron, no Steph Curry, no Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Davis, name them. Anthony Edwards, who were the other studs in the Western Cup? None of those. So you get some lesser known and lesser tiered players to play in the All Star game. I bet they'll give a rat's ass. Suddenly a guy like, wait a minute, suddenly a guy like Nas Reed is playing in the All-Star game. You don't think he's going to bust his ass well, out so, there? First of all, I don't think the fans would like that. Why not? That, because they want to see their the best players play. So 
I'm not well, so sure. The 12 year olds would. I think, I think grown I, NBA fans would be I, like, cool, I'll watch these guys. Yeah, I'm not so sure that's. Fair enough. I just like the idea. We don't we don't need to keep going on this. It, it, it just it, it's a very difficult problem to solve, just because it's. I mean, it would be easy to solve if it was financial, but mm-hmm. it's not. This is good medical device, Jesus. The losing players have to make an appearance on Draymond Green's podcast. Oh, no, <laughs> that's motivation. Uh, the Wolves. Good news. What a great idea. They signed up Mike Conley for another couple of seasons. Yeah, I love smart. Mike Conley Jr. I was excited the word the minute they agreed to bring him over this way, and I still love yep. him. He's such a great benefit to the club. Yep. And they you know, he was his contract was up at the end of this year, so they keep him for uh, two more years. And and I'm not, I'm not sure if it's player control or club control or if it's a solid two years, but fact of the matter is he's under contract now and that's a good thing because he is the big reason why they have a chance to do something in the playoffs just because of his maturity and his impact on everybody so yep he's one of the best uh the brooklyn nets fired their head coach jock vaughn that's news yeah. Uh, for those of you who were even aware of the Brooklyn Nets and their head coach, Jock Vaughn. <laughs> I was very surprised by that. I had no idea he was the coach in the league. Yeah, no one knows. <laughs> what about the damn Daytona 500? I actually watched a great amount of this, a great <laughs> deal of this race yesterday, and I, I'm going to make a prediction that it'll be the only race that I watch this year. <laughs> One left to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank, and away they go! That is Cindric into Chastain and up into traffic. Did they complete that lap? And did the leader get the white flag? This Caution could be waving. It. It's going to be close. I believe they saw the white flag. I, I, think, it's, I think it's William Byron. I think so, too. And the Daytona 500. The race winner will be the 24. We'll need the 24 to start the finish line. Goes to victory lane, William Byron. Well, they were spinning around and crashing into each other up and down, your typical Daytona yep. type of a setup. <laughs> William Byron is the name of the winner. Okay. I can't believe it, man. It's uh, This is incredible. I had a much different background than you know anybody in the sport growing up racing on iRacing on the computer. And to make it to the Daytona 500 and win the race is pretty amazing. That's William Byron right there. And I don't follow this like I used to, but I thought it was really interesting. And you heard him reference it right there. When he won the race, the announcers said that his starting point to what got him to be a a regular driver in the varsity circuit and now got him to winning the Daytona 500, his starting point was playing video games. Yeah, Yeah. he told his dad, he's been playing these racing video games for years, and then he told his dad when he was like 9 or 10, he's like, hey, I kind of want to give this NASCAR a chance. And then he went to the the training schools and stuff like that in Florida, and all of a sudden now we won the Daytona 500. That's pretty cool. That's a really cool story. Like Gran Turismo, that movie, wasn't Mm -hmm. that pretty much the plot? Yeah, it was. Like your yep. kid's a great video game player, and then they have him do a real race. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the dad saying, "No, you can't make a living off of video games." <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that something? I mean, old school NASCAR fans are are sick to their stomach when they they hear something like that. Mm-hmm. They they are, you know, they want it to. They want every driver to be somehow linked back to the moonshine running days of the 1950s, right? They want that old school hillbilly type to hear that a kid got there via video games. That pisses some people off. Not all of us. I think it's a pretty cool right. story. I think it's great. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? I mean, it, it's it's fascinating to me how much has changed, you know, over I the think year. I may try out for spring training. I play that baseball game a lot. <laughs> 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 I, I think I can do that. You would take a 120 mile per hour line drive to the penis so fast. <laughs> oh, I would I would want to be right behind home plate wait, for that. Wait a second, you haven't seen me play. I used to play Excite Bike a lot as a kid. Mm. Maybe I could be some sort of motocross rider, or something like that. That game, that's a fun game. Frustrated the piss out of me. Oh, I loved that game. I loved it too, but didn't you get mad at it? When you'd overheat and you had to pull off to the side. Yeah, stuck in that stupid little mud puddle. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Kid started playing video games, and now he's the winner of the Daytona 500. 
They were crashing up and down. In the JV race, we've been talking about this the last couple of days. Frankie Munoz, whatever the hell his name is from uh, Malcolm in the Middle. You next? Ah, he crashed his car. Ah. Bummer. He crashed 37 laps in. He probably didn't play enough video games growing up. Mm-hmm. He might not remember it. You know, he forgot yeah. a lot of his youth. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Here's someone texting in about, I mentioned a little while back, that Josh and I used to know a guy that married a woman that looked exactly like him. And she married a man that looked exactly like her. It was kind of weird. Someone texted in and said, so they look like Millhouse's parents? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, you know what? They kind of did, they, actually. Uh-huh. What? No way. They kind of did. Oh, my goodness. I never considered that. Yes. That's a great way to describe them. Kirk Van Houten's a great American. <laughs> and a lot of people texting in about uh, these bold stances that App, uh, Apple and Washley, how do you say their names again? Oh, well, Waffle Close. and Ashley's how I know them. The bold oh, I stances. You're making a new tech company. <laughs> that the two of you were uh, making on, uh, how do you call it, uh, age gaps. Age gaps. They don't like it. Well, there's people that agree. There's a few folks that feel the same way as you guys. And someone yeah. someone texted in and said, Yarmir Yager does not have kids. Did we say anything about kids? Yes. Well, we, we talked about him, a, a daughter. Oh, he doesn't have a daughter? I don't think so. Oh, who said he had a good-looking I- daughter? I said that he that he oh the, right the, the girlfriend looks like could be his daughter right just because they look alike I I that's my bad I got lost and ah oh, that makes things easier since he doesn't have kids to date younger <laughs> I right, suppose yeah I hear what you're saying I, yeah. I don't think for him it'd be an obstacle I agree <laughs> but I hear there's some logic to what you said Wap well, disgruntled mailman Jesus said he played a lot of Paperboy on Nintendo when he was a kid so that led into his career as a mailman look at that I loved Paperboy that was another fun one very fun game the world of professional darts has been hit with a farting scandal <gasps> oh what? no a dart <laughs> fart <laughs> a farting scandal <laughs> I don't. I don't know. At Costco. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they have the championship. <laughs> I do not know word one about professional darts, but apparently, some kind of super showdown between a couple of pros ended in controversy according to one of the dart throwers, if that's in fact how you refer to a professional dart player. A dartist, maybe. Ooh, dartist. Ooh. Like that. that works for me. Darren Webster is one of the fellas' names. He's, uh, he's a decorated champion. He was going uh, face-to-face, butt-to-butt, everybody but against a guy named Ron Muhlenkamp. <laughs> <laughs> so Darren Webster against Ron Muhlenkamp. Darren had a big lead. Sounds like maybe they do best of seven because Darren had a three games to none lead. But Ron Muhlenkamp did what Muhlenkamps do in big moments and came back and won the series four games to three. After the game, they exchanged words. They kind of got nose to nose. At least Webster seemed upset. Muhlenkamp seemed confused as to why he was being shouted at. On social media, Webster accused Muhlenkamp of crop dusting the arena or whatever you call it where professional darts <laughs> throw for their champion <laughs> the bar whatever it is and said the guy you know showed a lot of low class and gassed him and that threw him off his game maybe he couldn't help it well Mullenkamp completely denies it he says I did not drop any bottom on my opponent <laughs> Hmm. Well, we all know whoever denies it supplied it. <laughs> that is true. There was no bottom dropped. Uh, this uh, Darren Webster posted in this, he's English or something silly like that, so I don't understand what he's saying, but he said something like, when you play a guy who farts and stinks the stage out oh. and then denies it, blah, blah, blah. God, this sounds like a thing, actually, in this sport. What do you mean a thing? Well, it sounds like this is something that happens a lot. Well, yeah, I was just... Uh, funny you say that. Are you reading the same article I read, Randy? I'm, 
No, but I mentioned this is not the first farting scandal in the world of darts. (laughs) Oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, a, A number of years ago, a two time world dart champion by the name of Gary Anderson. Oh no. (laughs) <laughs> Did he always throw to the left? Take it easy. <laughs> oh, he missed the dartboard just to the left. <laughs> the only time all year. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are dicks. <laughs> Two-time world dart champion Gary Anderson had to defend his honor after being cu- accused of farting up a final final. The Grand Slam of darts in 2018. Oh, I remember. Were you there? Yeah. No. <laughs> Can you imagine, so, like, so it must not be like a loud thing. It must be like the silent. Well, you got the crowd and things like Probably that. Some music in the background, maybe. I think there's some decent cover. You see what I'm saying? It's not like you yeah. and your buddy throwing darts in the basement. You could probably yeah. really, you could really probably cut one loose, and no one's going to know at a big huh. massive. I've seen videos of these dart finals. The crowd is actually quite out of control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They are going bananas. And I don't even know how the hell they can see what's going on from where they're sitting. That's a very good point, right? They I, have these they have these dart final finals in in these big arenas, and the guy in the last row is coming completely uncorked. He can't even see the damn dartboard. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's coming uncorked. <laughs> these seats are terrible. <laughs> I can't see a thing. So this Gary Anderson was accused of farting up a final final by another dart thrower by the name of Wesley Harms. So, Randy Shaver, I guess it is a thing. Oh. I'm looking at I've, Gary Anderson, the dart player's Wikipedia page right now, and I just learned that uh, dart players, professional dart players, they have walk-up music. And his is Jump Around by House of Pain. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have known that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I yeah. love that. Uh, so, Anderson, when he's confronted about it, he swore on his children's lives that it wasn't him. <laughs> oh. I've seen that happen where a couple guys were getting in each other's face. They were furious about which one of them farted, and one of them swore on his <laughs> children's lives. Was I hope my dad's done that at some point in his life. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if he was lying? Do you still hope that? <laughs> Very interesting. All right. What is this nonsense? Former NFL tight end Jimmy Graham announced on social media that he intends to compete in an endurance event known as the Arctic Challenge. Bold North. (laughs) It's very different. This is the Arctic Challenge. Ever heard of this, Randy Shaver? I have not. Coming up in a couple of months, he'll be part of a four-person team that will row a little boat 621 miles across the Arctic Ocean. Wow. I thought it was maybe next year, 2025. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. At one point or another. Well, it's not as if we're going to keep track of this. (laughs) They're going to start their journey in Norway and row across the open Arctic Ocean landing somewheres uh, if they don't drown and it'll take 10 to 20 days for him to row this little boat across the cold lonely arctic ocean hmm. Whew, man they got boats with motors on them these days maybe you should use one of those give you an advantage yeah <laughs> i don't know some folks they just need competition in their lives yeah jimmy graham go join this Fart-ridden dart league in England, you know. <laughs> why? Why do something like this? I don't know. Sounds people... a little bit easier than rowing across the Arctic Ocean. Yeah. yeah. Some All folks... I got to do is eat a can of beans. <laughs> <laughs> they like the thrill. They like, hey, hey, I'm involved in something that you would never do. You know, that's part of the challenge. I think for some people, they like to be able to say, well, I'm one of only six people who have ever. I don't know. It's a, nothing that I would ever take an interest in. So there'll be. Uh, four, did I say a team of four? Yeah, four people rowing this boat in a little ocean rowing boat. I don't know what that means, but um, they'll alternate two-hour shifts of rowing, 24 hours a day. They bring all their supplies on board, food and whatever. So if they make it, they'd be the first all-American team to Hmm. complete this Arctic Challenge. Their goal is to break the current record of 15 days, 5 hours, and 32 minutes across the ocean. 
15 nice. days, 5 hours, and 32 minutes. He's Doesn't gonna catch his fun. death out there. Yes, he is. You think Randy sounds sick right now? That just doesn't sound fun. <laughs> Wait till Jimmy Graham is done with the Arctic Challenge. I bet he'll have a hell of a cold. No, it doesn't sound fun at all. And finally here, I uh, I don't have much of a memory of Blake Prohl when he played for an hour or so with the Vikings a few years right. ago. Um, but now we, we've discussed this before. Now he's trying to be a pro singer. He showed up on American Idol the other day. My grandma is the reason why I'm here. I really didn't believe in myself at all music-wise, and she's the reason why I have any confidence at all to be in this room. So I um, started playing and learning, and I, I pranked her, and the video kind of went like viral. It went like viral, he said. It didn't. Uh, Blake Prohl sang for the crew on American Idol, and apparently he had that uh, Katy Perry wet in her pants when he sang to her. Can't count the times I almost said what's on my mind. But I didn't. I just didn't. <laughs> that's, right. that's deep. Uh, Lovely one. I like that song. That's a pretty, he has a pretty voice. That might be the only song that works for him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What is the song? It says here, In Case title. You Didn't Know by Brett Young. Yeah. Okay, I've I, never heard I, of it. I like Brett Young. He's very good. Yes, absolutely. It says that, here, That range may be the Brett Young songs may be the only thing that works for him. So you don't have high hopes that he's going to be touring with, with Pitbull or anything like I, that? I, in the, I, I don't know. It says here that uh, Gary Prohl, what the hell's his name again? Uh, his dad is Ricky. Mm-hmm. Blake, Blake, Blake. Blake. Blake Prohl gave goosebumps to Katy Perry. Oh, she's got goosebumps, all right. Every grandma thinks By that God. their grandchildren are great, but you're right! <laughs> you're going to be top fine. 10. You're going to be just fine. <laughs> You just did that song the right way in a very believable way, in a very innocent, vulnerable, like every girl that you sit down and sing that to, they're going to be melted butter, kind of like this one a minute ago. (laughs) But it was just a real moment. I wrote one thing down here that stood out, natural. It's just one of those things that either you have it or you don't. And in this case, my friend, you have, Blake, you have stepped into a, <clears throat> an oval with, Thank you, I appreciate with guts that. and gusto. Yes, sir. So I miss when go. they were mean. <laughs> <laughs> you, you thought that was too nice? Yeah, they're all, they're way too nice now. That I, um, was, uh, he's not going to make top 10. Yeah. That was Katy so. Perry there and um, Lionel Richie and uh, Larry the Cable Guy, I Blake think. Blake Shelton. Oh, Blake Shelton. Uh, giving him all the credit in the world, saying, you're on your way. You have your doubts as well, Ashley? Well, I think he has a beautiful voice, but I don't think he's going to be top 10 at all. He's all he's dating a 77-year-old woman, too. You got a problem with that? <laughs> <laughs> How old is he? looks like he's like 21. Isn't that what he signed, though? Katy Perry had him sign a piece of paper, and I think that advanced him to the top 10. Top 10 of what? American Idol. Oh, I don't know what that means. Does that oh, mean you get Oh, really? A... He got yeah, so he... fast-tracked? Yeah, he got fast-tracked all the way up. So oh, so they weren't saying go... you're going to be a top 10 recording artist. They're saying you're going to be in our top 10 singers yes. on next week's show or something no, like no, that? No offense to him, but the I think American having Idol. the grandmother standing next to him is probably why he ended up being... Advanced. Oh, his grandmother was there standing mm-hmm. with. Oh, that's yeah. not fair. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly. That's they always have fair. some type of like crazy yeah. sob story. What? Yeah. Do they really? Yeah, yeah. he was. Yeah. Talking well, that's how they keep it her. interesting. Yeah, he was talking about her, and then he's like, "Yeah, she's just right outside the door." And then they brought her in. Well, this might be my grandmother's last chance to hear me sing. Here right. goes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Of course, they're going to send him through. Oh, that's mm-hmm. cheating. Well, I better yep. sing this song for you real quick before I go home to my ten babies who need uh, dinner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, well, you sang beautifully. People are saying that was Luke Bryan, not Blake Shelton. The article yeah, said it's Luke, Blake. It's, it's Luke Bryan. Yeah, the article said Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton's on The Voice. I, I don't watch that show. Did I tell Blake you what Shelton my used to be on The Voice. Did I tell you what my buddy did over the weekend at the Pitbull concert? Did you guys hear about this concert? I did. No. no. I didn't know about it till I got to the bar Saturday morning, and one of my buddies is sitting at the bar looking really hungover. I said, what the hell did you do last night? He said he went off and saw a concert starring Pitbull, Ricky Martin. Oh, yeah. And Enrique O, F me running sideways Iglesias, right? <laughs> and this buddy of mine 
when he puts on a pair of like how do you call it sun sun blockers what do they call those sunglasses again josh blue blockers when he puts on a pair of blue blockers he looks exactly like that pit bull dude so he put on a fancy outfit went to the pit bull concert put on his blue blockers he's walking around the hallway he had everybody in the arena wanting to take a picture with him (laughs) that's cool i bet he got some free beer I didn't ask if he got any free beer, but people were crowded around him to take a picture with him because he looks so much like stinking Pitbull. It was a lot of fun. Then Josh showed up, and since he looks just like Ricky Martin, (laughs) (laughs) well, F it then. All right, Randy Shaver. There you go, son. Okay. Surprised you missed out on that concert on Saturday night. (laughs) Yeah, I'm a little disappointed. We all are. We all are. Get <laughs> a well lot of things, uh, again actually. for like the fifth or sixth straight day. Yeah. Feel better. I'm, I'm getting there. We know it's you. Just, uh, it's just a process. And we'll talk to you tomorrow, for Christ's sake. Sounds good. Thanks, Randy. We'll be back here in a few minutes on the program. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our experienced and certified technicians at Standard Heating have been trusted to keep our fellow Minnesotans comfortable and confident for over 90 years. We're ready to do the same for you, providing comfort you deserve since 1930. Standard Heating is having their 94-year celebration. They have special offers just for you this February. Whether you need a new furnace or a tune-up, they have something special for everyone. Visit standardheating.com to save today. You love Lala Kent on Vanderpump Rules. Now get to know her on Give Them Lala. We're going into Vanderpump Rules. Easton, you told me that Raquel is a little nervous. She talks about it on Rachel Goes Rogue. And she's a little nervous for her podcast to be airing while season 11 is airing. Let me tell you something. She should have come back to the show. It would have been very different than what she thinks it would have been. She shot herself in the foot. She's not the brightest bulb. We all know this. Watch what Lala is talking about on YouTube or search for Give Them Lala wherever you listen. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Yeah, I hear you. She's up to 827. Welcome, everyone, to the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Welcome back if you've been here with us for a while. Because, you know... Josh will tell you this right to your friggin' face. We appreciate each and every damn last one of you. We do. Without a doubt. All right, we started out gross. <laughs> We're going to keep that theme. We started out gross, started out the show talking about a guy. Oh, what did he do now? A guy who left a big fat money shot on somebody's pool table. Ugh. And it was enlightening. I learned some things about my coworkers. I wish I could hit myself in the head hard enough to forget. <laughs> Get that what, cartoon amnesia? Specifically Ashley. <laughs> what did you learn about? I don't remember. Well, I don't even want to go back into it, but Ashley telling us ways she's uh, consummated a relationship. <laughs> she's had sex on a pool table? Yeah. That's what she and was how, telling you? And uh, she told us, like, positions. <laughs> it was a little too much for me. Oh, sorry. It's disrespectful. Um, the guy that we were just talking about perfectly good floor this was a house party perfectly good floor perfectly good couches all over the house but he chose to fold some lady on the pool table and left some evidence behind he roped the felt on the table never cleaned it up and as i said earlier real men account for their spills show some respect for someone's property we started out gross we're going to keep with that theme. What I just I, realized something about your friend. Go ahead, Cubby. More than likely, he was not using a condom. No, he more he, than likely was not. He wasn't. Okay, that doesn't seem doesn't seem like that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> some folks go one way, some go the other way yeah. with that. You know what I'm saying? I was always told you're supposed to have one of those on there. Yeah, yeah. I've been told the same damn thing. Only bought them once. Uh, <laughs> what's it? Oh, no. I, I forgot who texted me or emailed me this now. I think Electrician Jesus. Uh, he had a question earlier. You were saying you can't have sex on a friend's bed or something like this. Well, you know, we, we had, we've we had conversations this morning on age limits. Ashley and Wapple made their stance on age gaps in relationships. I think having sex in your friend's bed also has an age limit. I think when you're a young person, of course, you're going to let her buck wherever you get the chance. But once you hit a certain age, it's no longer acceptable to be pinning someone on your damn friend's bed, nor is it acceptable for them to be pinning someone in yours. So Electrician Jesus wants to know if he found a, u- a loophole to this 
All right, this theory. You can't have sex in your friend's bed. Now, what if it's in your friend's bed, but with your friend's girlfriend? So it's partly her bed. Is that a loophole we agree is okay, or is that not okay? I'm going to go with no. That's such hot stuff, I think we have found our loophole, I think. Your friend's girlfriend? Genius. Your friend doesn't know about it? Hell yeah. Oh, if you're having sex on a pool table, you don't need to wear a condom. You just chalk the tip, according to Rose Master <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I feel like that would burn. Gross things, literally and morally, that led couples to break up. Gross things, literally and morally, that led couples to break up. Anyone got anything that they could share? Now, me personally... I've never been in a relationship with a woman who did anything nearly gross enough to make me consider breaking up with her. Oh, wait a minute. No, I guess I have. I was like, wait a minute. The fart. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The fart. Certainly plenty of one night stands where something happened. Mm, Sometimes it was just really bad kissing that came off kind of gross. Sometimes maybe it was a smell. There have been uh. one night stands where I thought, ah, that was enough for me to to not call her back. But with relationships, I guess, yeah, there was the one time, the fart. <laughs> the fart. That, that ended things for you. That, that ended the relationship. I True. find it hilarious that you had warned her if that ever happens, we're done. True story. And then story. you followed through with it. True story, I followed through. Man of your word. Wasn't I, she doing yoga at the time? She was. Okay. I warned her. Said no farting. Well, you uh, kicked a coworker out of the building once because you said there's no farting in this studio unless it was uh, me or yourself. Yeah, and uh, he broke that rule and he was sent home for the day. He was man of my word. So I'm guessing the rest of you is have that in common with me um, in the relationships you've been in, where you are with somebody dating, whatever you want to call it. You probably haven't had too many instances where they did something so disgusting morally or literally where you considered breaking up with them. No. Mm -mm. Right. But there are stories here. There's stories. Her breath was so bad I couldn't make out with her. All I could think of was don't vomit, don't vomit, don't vomit. Ooh. Gross. Like continuously? Some people have that problem. Oh. Some people have that problem. What do they call it? Halitosis? Halitosis. Oh, yeah. We worked with a girl that we called Galatosis because she had a real, <laughs> real big problem. That would I mean, be hard you could for be me. in the same room. I've never experienced that before. Come on, we deserve more credit for, for that. Mm-hmm. Galatosis. Yeah, Galatosis. <laughs> you don't sit there and act like that's not genius. <laughs> a lady showered at her boyfriend's place after staying over and asked for a towel. He gave me one which had skin flakes on it. Oh, boy. Ew. I asked for a clean one. He asked me what I meant. He did not realize that you need to wash towels. Oh. Um, Oh. He Uh -uh. said his theory was they have water on them, so they clean themselves. Mm. I'll admit I go a few showers before I wash a towel. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to join in and... And go, ew, God, and make fun of this guy for having disgusting towels. But, I mean, I go a long time. Uh, Really? Oh, a long time. I used to, uh, I grew up in a household where, I mean, we we never did that. We never reused towels. Um, Oh, really? Yeah, we always had like 30 of them. We had a closet just full of towels. And so when I moved out and moved in with a, a boyfriend, I was just surprised and very disgusted that people did that. But now, I mean, now I usually go, I probably wash the towel every two, three dries. Hmm. Can I gross you out even yeah. more? Uh, so I grew up in a very big family, and um, to save money on washing, we would have community towels that would last a few days. <laughs> so like the eight or nine people using the same towel. Were yep. they de- designated Yucky. for like... T- like the certain like sexes, like did the females use one towel? Didn't matter. And the males no, used it's one? just the family. Oh. You don't know. You oh. folks don't know the pain 
Penis of face. Ju- Pardon me? It's a penis face. Penis face? Yeah. What, is that? What, is, what does that mean? Because the dudes will dry, you know, every part of them. Well, you could make an, a vagina face reference why, yeah, to Why yeah, can't it be a too. vagina face? Why, why are we always the bad people? The guys. <laughs> Josh, I, I know exactly what you mean. You don't know how horrible it is to be a 12-year-old kid. You jump in the shower and you got to use... A damp towel that someone else in your family just used 20 minutes before you. Did you used to have to take a bath in sibling soup? Because I did. (laughs) No. You always wanted to be the first one in the tub. My parents would not let you drain the tub and fill it back up. You could maybe (sighs) add some hot water as you went, but you couldn't, like, in between have the bath water go and then the next person gets their own. And and maybe that's why now in my adult life, I mean, I'll be totally honest with you. I'll use the same towel to shower uh, two months Three months? Oh. I can only go Whoa. twice. I'm good for a couple weeks, probably. And, yeah, and, I'm with you, Josh. And, and I mean, I guess it's probably because I, I, I've gone through worse. Yeah, I could only do two times. Like, you know, new yeah. towel, use it, and then hang it up, use it again, and then it's got to be gone. Yeah, Doesn't I'm with bother you, Wobble. Me. Doesn't bother me. All right. So bro. you, but you use, it's just you that uses the towel. Yes. But then you get vagina face the second yeah, time. Yeah, you do. You vagina face <laughs> you yourself. You got vagina face. <laughs> Wait. I mean, does it make a difference a... to oh. you that I'm the only person using that towel for three months? Does, it, does that not make any difference to you? Uh, I still think it's kind of gross. Yeah. Oh, Don't I think care. there's a difference, though. Oh, there's, there's certainly a difference. a difference. There's a difference. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I still think I would wash it. Doesn't bother me. Okay. Gross things that led couples to break up. Saw his toothbrush for the first time, a gal says. It had black mold growing on it. Oh. And the bristles were so flat that the toothbrush had a middle part. Oh. <laughs> it's got oh, we, used to, we used to flatten ours out like that, too. Wow. I, I come from a gross background. I mean, now, I'm a little in the toothbrush department, I'm different. I go buy like the 10 pack and I'll switch it out. As soon as, you know how you, you start to grow. An inch of toothpaste crust where you where you hang on to the sum bitch. Yeah, then I, I clean mine every yeah. day. Yeah, mine's, I mine's wash clean. my toothbrushes. Oh, You're supposed I, to. Or my mom always or like it. soaked them mm-hmm. in hydrogen peroxide every couple of weeks, so I try to do that. Oh, really? Nowadays, <laughs> I'm I'm better about it. But when we were kids, oh yeah, we'd flatten that sum bitch out. So this girlfriend sees the toothbrush for the first time. Uh, she had a conversation with him about hygiene and about getting a new toothbrush. Roastmaster Jesus thinks we're disgusting, Nick. Uh, they use a new white towel every time so it can be bleached. Ooh. But door hauling Jesus brings up a good point. He says, you know, you use the towel after you're cleaned with soap and water. It's yeah. the cleanest you're ever going to be. Well, I actually wipe off before. <laughs> I don't wipe I air dry. You like my, to get that extra stank out yeah, of it. Yeah, I just try and help the shower. It out. doesn't bother me at all. My it, big reason is because of the pets I own. So if uh, that towel goes anywhere other than the bathroom for longer than a second, it's just covered in dog hair. Well, that's disgusting. Yeah, Wait a minute, it is. wait a minute. We're disgusting over here? Mm-hmm. You can't even cross the room with a bath towel on be- without it getting covered in dog? I have three dogs that all shed. Oh, well, I mean, you don't have everywhere. to have three dogs who all shed. <laughs> so the toothbrush was gross. I'm much better about this now to the point where I almost do it obsessively. Do what? I but to say so my but it was my freshman year about spring break when I realized that you're supposed to wash your sheets. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. We've yeah. had this conversation many times. My my sheets are disgusting and, and I could be better and at it that. doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother me. It's bad for your skin. So that's 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 like the main reason. I don't really care if it's dirty, but I know that like if you oh, don't really? wash your pillowcases, yeah, you can break out and stuff like that. Oh, I didn't know that. Even with your dogs, you don't Want to wash it and get it clean because they're so dirty? Yeah. I mean, they sleep in the bed with me. I don't really care. Hmm. Oh, my damn. Okay, so not all of this stuff is literally gross. Sometimes it's just really odd behavior that le- led to a, a breakup. Here's a gal who had to deal with a guy who would cry if she didn't have sex with him. Oh, I'd be done uh-huh. instantly the That's- first time it happened. Nope. He, Dude, he, what a joke. You're in danger. Yes. Yeah. He needed to be touched constantly. That's really, really effing creepy. Yeah. She breaks up with him, then he texted and called for about five years afterwards. Uh-uh. We only dated for two months. Yeah, that's psychomaniac, chainsaw killer type stuff. And you thought we were crazy about the whole towel thing. Yeah, <laughs> wow. I don't think I've ever been had an experience where guys had to like, where they've like 
begged for it or anything or like you know tried to like convince me that would just gross me out immediately it'd be like if there was a chance there's definitely not anymore all right so back i've to never the- been that loved either nobody's ever loved me enough <laughs> to stalk me and make me uncomfortable by crying hoping that i'll have sex with me. <laughs> what a dream back to the straight up old school literal gross outs uh dude says his girlfriend told him she never cleans up cat barf she just waits to let the dogs eat it oh i <laughs> don't do that i had a buddy oh. whose parents would let their dogs poop in their basement and then oh. they'd clean it up sometimes oh were was, they little so dogs gross. at least oh. they were like mid medium-sized dogs uh, could you yeah. smell the poop throughout the house yes oh. Oh. absolutely you could oh. right there on the carpet on the carpet? I was thinking like cement floor. Nope. Oh. She never cleaned up the cat bar. She'd simply wait and let the dog eat it. And once the dog got too old slash deaf slash blind, she would lead the dog to the cat barf. And then he would... Oh, hang on. <laughs> That's even crazier. <laughs> He became blind, so now I need to guide him to the barn. Like, just pick it off. The cutest little (laughs) noise ever, Nick. Who's blind to eat it? I mean, I could. Chomping it up. I can definitely Uh. be lazy, but I'm not that lazy. I think I'd clean that up. Yeah, you're going to be walking right next to the cat barf, anyway. Yeah, good point, Waffle. (laughs) Let's put some newspaper on it. (laughs) All right. Gross things that led you to break up. Oh. You know, we know this better than than we ever have. We're just surrounded by experts. People who have zero experience in numerous different fields, they're still an expert. Makes me sick to my stomach. That's why I hate us so much these days. But check this out. This is gross behavior. I'm at a party with some friends... One of my friends, who had recently been diagnosed with cancer, was sharing some of his experiences with chemotherapy. My girlfriend interrupts him and says, Oh, come on, it's not that big of a deal. We all probably have cancer. Moles are usually cancer. Look, I've probably had cancer on all these moles on my arm. Mm. Not a big deal. What a hero. I broke up with her a few days later, he says. Good call. Come on with your beefing and complaining about chemotherapy. Uh, I was just so appalled by her lack of self-awareness. These were my friends who I had known for a decade. We were in a small group of maybe nine people, most of whom she hadn't even met before. Holy smokes, would that be embarrassing. Uh Mm. Here's a guy who found it gross when he found a swastika under his girlfriend's left boob. Dude, I I don't even know how I'd respond to something like that. That'd be scary. Yeah. Yeah, let me check out the boobs here. Looking pretty good. Ah, ah, ah. (laughs) All right, just going to make sure there's no swastika. Oh, no, there is one. Mm. I'm going to give my wife a swastika check when I get home. (laughs) Very thorough one. Here's a guy who had a wife. You following this so far, Josh? So I, think, I, I was hoping he'd give me more details. It's confusing. He had a wife. He got kind of grossed out when she got pregnant. Because they hadn't had sex in months. Oof. Oof. Ba, 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 ba. Oh. And when the baby was born, it was a swastika. <laughs> oh. Is that how they're created? <laughs> What position do you have to have sex in to create a swastika? (laughs) Not a good one. Here's a lady who didn't like her boyfriend because he sweated profusely every time they had sex. And he'd slobber on her. Uh, Didn't you say you're a sweater, Dana? Yeah, I'm a sweater. Just in general, not necessarily just during sex, but just I just sweat. I don't need a reason. Oh, it's not a sexual thing? Mm -mm. God, when I was younger, I used to just pour sweat. Well, I should say specifically during one time period, I was drinking a lot. And when I would get it smooth on, as the young people say, I would just pour sweat. But I have to say that, lucky me, the gals who I was involved with at the time, 
they chalked it up as sexy. Yeah, I was gonna say there is a like a, a certain line there. Oh, I, there's I, a little bit of some sweat. I was hot. embarrassed. I was I, I would apologize. I'd say I don't I don't know, but it was just my body was it's like in, dripping all their face. Oh, and it stuff. was. I was just oh. in real trouble physically. I just drank all day and all night, and it just the the beer would just pour. It was horrible, but I I got lucky. Blondes are just for practice, Jesus said. He broke up with a girl because every time she blinked, she could hear her eyes clicking, and it freaked him out. Oh, what? He said, I think she blamed it on her contacts, but whatever, Miss Clicky Eyes, oh, he said. Oh, can't believe that would bother went, me, too. Her eyes clicked. Here's I've a, never heard of such a thing. Stop blinking. <laughs> One guy broke up with his girlfriend because she tortured hamsters. Oh, Dude, that's like call uh, the cops. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. That's there's some under, underlying issues there. He did call the cops, and he <laughs> even had to testify in court. Whoa! And then he went on with his life. <laughs> Find out your girlfriend tortures animals. My God, who would you rather have, the animal torturer or the cry if you don't have sex with them? The cry guy <laughs> for yeah. sure. Yeah. Ah. Cry. I don't know. You're you're risking your life in both situations. <laughs> I'd feel safer with the cry guy. <laughs> ah. Semiconductor builder Sheeza said, I had a co-worker you could be having a conversation with, and mid-conversation, she'd start picking her nose, seriously digging in. The best was when she did it while talking to the boss because the look on his face was priceless. Oh. <laughs> mm. right, more reasons that people broke up. Gross reasons why people broke up. They want to glorify the fact that they're criminals. It's dumb. These guys are dumb. They deserve to be tossed under the jail just for being dumb. The 93X half as Morning as Show. God dang, Cubby. It's just gross. I know. <laughs> Some of these texts coming in. <laughs> yeah. Today's been gross, but a, a hell of a lot of fun. I've got a cast iron stomach for kind of gross stuff, but there's a few where even I thought, I'm going to set my apple down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this. We've been, uh, folks have been rapping about the gross things that led them to breaking up with someone. The gross thing, sometimes it's literally, you know, you wiped your hand on your butt and you spit in the, you know, or, or sometimes it's more figuratively gross, you know, personality traits and things like that. The overwhelming amount of texts have been literal gross things. Yeah, thankfully, um, I've never really experienced anything so gross that it stands out. You know, there's no. been moments where I'm like, oh, I kind of wish that didn't happen. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, nothing that uh, stood out or or would make me ever want to, you know, trash a relationship over it. I had a girlfriend for a couple of years and she was lactose intolerant for a large portion of that without realizing it. And uh, looking back, that was pretty disgusting. She had to, uh, well, yeah, I've heard that's very bad. So bad. you're saying she farted all the time and smelled the apartment up? No, just she would have to go to the bathroom all the time. Oh, like we'd so be driving somewhere and she'd be like, like, we need to pull over. I'm like, do we need? And she goes, yes, yes, we need right now, right now. Oh, I, I had that problem for many years. You didn't, uh, you didn't guilt her over that, no. did you? I felt, I honestly felt terrible for her because it was, once she found out that, oh, I shouldn't eat cheese anymore, her life greatly improved. But for a while <laughs> there, it was, it was pretty oh, touch and go. I have some lifelong friends who owe me an apology <laughs> and they've yet to apologize to me for guilting me. When I'd have to, you know, pull over or, or whatever the emergency would be, mm-hmm. I, I didn't understand it. You yeah. know, I'd say, okay, uh, we're pulling over. I, I got to go to the bathroom. You got to go now. It's not like you're doing it to be funny right. or to annoy people. Yeah. Look, look I, it's either it's either I, I get into that gas station bathroom or I do it right here in the car when you sit. <laughs> I don't understand people. They, what, what do you mean? What, what's what's the problem? What's wrong with you? What do you want from me? You, you know? can't hold it? No, you literally wanted, I cannot. <laughs> I didn't I didn't think I owed you an explanation when I have to use the Okay, you so You shouldn't be potty shamed. I was. Oh, absolutely. I have a I have a terrible thought going through my head right now. What if What's somebody that? has a story about me? Like a, something that I don't even realize. Something so gross or like I smelled or I uh, well, we, can't we've, kiss or uh, Oh, I know somebody that that definitely has that story about me. Um me it too. was it was a guy that I only went out on like a couple dates with him, but um, I had some type of situation going on. I guess like uh, my time of the month was just like odd. What, what now? Now you have your time of the month? <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. You gotta, well, you gotta, we gotta exactly. do this now. Well, it was like a little odd. So I was like, oh, like to the point where I was like, I should get this checked out. And so he, he helped me out, like brought me to the doctor, stayed with me in the room. That was his choice, all right. He shouldn't have stayed within the room because they did a pelvic exam. 
Okay. And after that, because they, they use tools, and then they put them on like a tray. It's yeah. not like it's hidden. Yeah, he called me like maybe like two whole weeks later. Like I, I figured it was done and was like, yeah, uh, I don't think this is working. And I was like, ah, it's because of that. Well, Isn't like it? you said, that was his friggin' choice. Yeah, it's yeah. his fault. It's like you didn't have to stay with me no, in the room. No, I'm sure you would have preferred it to be private. He was the <laughs> one who... So that's not your friggin' fault. Oh, it was so You shouldn't awkward. be called the gross person in that situation. <laughs> it's like, Mail, it's natural. Mail hucker Jesus said, my wife's a slob, I'll tell you. Every time I go pee in the sink, there's dirty dishes. <laughs> <laughs> then he, put, he credited Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> All right, so here are some final, final answers here before we go. Things that gross somebody out so badly, they just had to take a walk on the relationship. Uh, speaking of taking a walk, this guy would walk his dog. The dog cuts a deuce. He picks up the uh, deuce with the plastic bag, but then he'd put the baggie in his kitchen garbage. <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't do that. Uh, here's a guy who a uh, lady had to break up with him. He kissed his dog like he was licking an ice cream cone. That's pretty that gross. That's oh. weird. Alarming. Where's the peanut butter? I can guess. Like a sore D, you can't beat it, Jesus said. Uh, he broke up with the lady after a couple months because she told me the main reason she was attracted to him is because he looked exactly like her dad. Oh. And he said, wow. yes, the sex was good. <laughs> Someone else texted in and she said that I broke up with my partner because he liked diapers. He would literally wear one whenever he was around me. What? Yeah, there's all types out there. I mean, not all of it is literal gross stuff. Some of it is just like morally gross, I guess. Um, this screams psycho killer to me right here. What was the one earlier where it was totally... So oh, the guy who would Crying cry. Guy? There was a guy who would cry if his girlfriend wouldn't have sex with him. Try manipulate her. What the hell is wrong with you, son? Here's another one. This one screams psycho killer. Boyfriend starts to tickle the girlfriend. This is the girlfriend complaining now. And she has right to complain. Boyfriend's tickling her, and it has quite an effect on her. I mean, I've told you guys before, there are spots on me where if you try to tickle me there, I'll kill you. <laughs> I will. So he's tickling his girlfriend, and she's, stop, stop. He refused to stop. She ended up wetting her pants. Does that not scream psycho yeah, killer? Yeah, that's weird. That you w refuse to stop? Yeah. That is, uh, that is very odd. Dubbed famous Mises got home from work one day and saw a towel in the toilet. So he assumed his girlfriend accidentally dropped it in. Nope, he said, we were just out of toilet paper. Oh! <laughs> she tried to flush a towel. Oh, come on! I mean, if you're out, you're desperate, that's what's around, sure, <laughs> gross, but what are you going to do? But you tried to flush it? Don't try to flush it. <laughs> you take that out to the garbage can in the garage. Put it not in the backyard. <laughs> well, I nope. saw the commercial with the golf balls, so I just tried this. Oh, man. Here's a female listener who admits that she's gagging even typing this to us, but she wanted to contribute to our conversation on gross things that led you to break up with someone, change your mind about someone. My boyfriend sneezed. He didn't cover his face. A booger landed on his pants. And he ate it! You, you know, there's a few people who text in about booger readers, adult booger readers. All right, that's Including, just... Including, yeah, somebody said they broke up with their ex-husband <laughs> over him eating boogers. As you know very well, Josh, that that's the bottom of the barrel for me. How do I say yeah. that? That's the ultimate evil to me. Okay, real quick. <sighs> And then we got to get going. But this stuff is so much fun. It's troubling, but it's fun. One of our listeners had a girlfriend that would keep all of his condoms in a container. Oh. Well, the, the new ones. Oh. What you, what's the matter with you people? I, I pictured were... the used one. Well, we're talking about gross things. Yeah. So yeah. That, that seemed to... to I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I can understand why you would assume that. <laughs> um, girlfriend would keep the condoms in a container. She would keep track of how many they had and, and how many had been used to make sure he wasn't cheating. She would count them up. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's not... Mm -hmm. Because he, like, can't just go buy condoms and <laughs> yeah. keep them on? Add a new one? one? Yeah. Uh, How about this? This text. This person says, Boyfriend sharted after drinking and chased me with it. Oh! I don't want to be chased by a shark from my significant other. <laughs> Yo, what? Dude let his dog sleep in the bed with him. One day he discovered that the dog had left a skid mark on the sheets. 
Uh, but he told me, this is the girlfriend speaking, uh, he was too tired to change the sheets. So he slept on a dog turd skidded Ugh. bed for one night because he was too tired. Yeah, we uh, got a dog we can't let up in our bed anymore because he does. He can't control it. And he's too old. Uh, one final final on my end. And then we'll let everyone enjoy their breakfast because it's been sitting there for a while, I would imagine. Uh, dude says his ex-girlfriend dabbed herself down there after sweating all day and then swabbed it across his upper lip. Oh! oh. <laughs> you have been hurt. Yeah. Oh, that's you funny. have been Who hurt. Who does that, he says. Who oh. does that? Yeah. Normal people don't do things like that. No, they do not. <laughs> I need a palate cleanser here. Let's see. Here we go. Buddha from Nepal, Jesus, text the Luther Bloomington Kia tax line to wish his beautiful wife, Angie, a happy 40th birthday and a 20th anniversary they celebrated last week. Speaking of anniversaries, happy anniversary to our buddy, big bearded Jared and Mal. Eight years married, 12 together. Happy anniversary, guys. And a couple of notes. Hope Breakfast Bar in Egan, they're donating 100% of sales to the families of the first responders killed in Burnsville over the weekend. That's 100% awesome. today. And tonight, the owner also plans to be outside the Burnsville City Hall, serving up some free hot meals and prayers to the first responders, their families, and anyone in the community in need that continues to grieve. So again, that's today at Hope Breakfast Bar in Egan. They're located at 1012 Diffley Road, open until 3 p.m. And the city of Burnsville said there's now a verified fund to help the families of the two police officers and the firefighter paramedic who gave their lives trying to keep the community safe. In a news release and social media post this morning, city officials announced those wanting to make financial donations are being steered to a coordinated website by the Law Enforcement Labor Services, saying contributions will be delivered directly to the families. City leaders added the outpouring of support and contributions already seen over the past two days from people across the Twin Cities and greater Minnesota wanting to help the loved ones of those three first responders is deeply appreciated. And you can check all our socials and our website for specifics how you can help. The 93X and Half-Ass Morning Show. 93. The 93X Half-Ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Standard Heating is having their 94-year celebration. They have special offers just for you this February. Whether you need a new furnace or a tune-up, they have something special for everyone. Visit standardheating.com to save today. 